what is up everybody what's up welcome back and this what do they call this apple river stabbing trial that's been taking place i think this is the second week currently and i heard it's an interesting trial there's a lot going on there's this altercation that took place between this person that i don't know if he was 54 at the time or he's 54 now this happened july 30th 2022 where there was this altercation at a river now we're gonna watch the opening statements he took the stand today there's been a bunch of different testimony there's some video out there but the video the annoying thing about the video to me is like i haven't found one place where it's all together like i skimmed the opening statements i skimmed throughout the trial and i emailed two people and they were telling me like they show bits and pieces throughout the trial which is annoying to me just show the whole damn thing what I am going to do is there's this clip on Twitter. I can't show the whole thing because um, it gets graphic, but I believe we can watch up to so at least give people somewhat of the gist. We can watch this guy pulls out the knife. He stabbed multiple people. One person died. One person was disemboweled with like their intestines like coming out of them and they survived the person with their that was disemboweled. Um, I'm just, I just want to make sure I think we can show it up to like two minutes. Um, I want to show the part where they kind of, okay. I, I think, I think right up to this point where he gets knocked in the water and then he gets up and then I, I'll stop there at two, the two minute mark. I think. One fifty nine, maybe. Maybe I'll stop there. Cause I actually I don't even know if the person that pushed him he stabbed him. I don't know. It's so hard to see everything happen in such a fast succession of things. I'll put the video up. Monica gave me like a brief synopsis. We're gonna look at an article too before we start. A brief synopsis of like. What is he on? Whoa! Whoa! So Monica told me. Basically, where's it at? There we go. Basically, a few groups were out on the river tubing, floating in inner tubes when all hell broke loose. It looked like somehow NM, which is the guy on the stand right now, Nik Nikolai Miu, that's how you say it, NM went near and touched the teens' groups' tubes. I think he was supposedly looking for a scuba mask or a friend's lost phone. Then the teens, many underage and drinking, approached him. Then he was outnumbered. He felt threatened. He had a knife in his shorts, his pocket. During the altercation, the teens were calling him names, pushing him, etc. He landed in the shallow water a few times. He was then slapped by a girl who was yelling in his face, prompting one of the other group's teens to punch him, etc., etc. It was so fast. The victims were on the stand in day two after the deceased kid's mom. The stab wounds were unreal. The teen who passed, I think, died immediately. The nurse was doing CPR for 45 minutes. Don't think she ever got a pulse. Um, let me just show a snippet of this. What is he on? Whoa! 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 Oh, 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 God! Yeah! 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 What are you talking about? Yeah! What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and clearly, this is not the beginning of what happened. I don't, I don't know what's, you know, this, this just starts here. This is the most I can see. We're gonna watch the opening statement. Get away from us! What? What's going on with y'all, homie? He's on camera. Guys, let's go. Guys, on camera. He's on camera. Yo, the new iPhone got that good quality. What did he say? Oh, he's on camera. Oh, he's on camera. Yeah, what the hell? Who is this? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes
the culture! We're the culture! Who is that? We're the culture! Who is that? Who the hell is this? Go! It doesn't matter! You can't even look for little girl! Go! You said he was looking for little girl! You looking for little girl? Yeah! That's exactly what he said! We're the I didn't have that part on camera! Did I show him young ass kid? What the hell is this guy's problem, bro? We trying to have fun! Is he gonna call you? He's gonna kill you! Okay, so at this point he like pulls out the knife. Um, I just I don't I want to be careful what I show here real quick. Hold on, pulls out the knife. Okay, I can show this. So he, he pulls out a knife out of his pocket. <laughs> Go and push him in the water. Slap him. Push him around. I think he gets pushed again. At at dip at that point though, I think that's where he stabbed the kid. He, the kid's pushing him. I think that's he stabbed him. He has a knife in his hand, backs away. At that point, too, I'm not going to show up, but there's another girl, she, like her side. She has like some girl she's bleeding from her side. So I guess at some point, I'm cut her in her Yeah, and the guy that pushed him, the last guy to push him, he was disemboweled. Or his, like his whole stomach got pulled open. So it's a very controversial, very controversial thing. There's a lot of people, you know, some people saying it's self-defense. People on Twitter saying it's not self-defense. Um, he shouldn't have used a knife and it's kids. This was the man who stabbed the group of teens in the Wisconsin River has described how he feared for his life after he was surrounded. They surrounded him like wolves. He took the stand. They're charging him with first degree intentional homicide over the attack. July 30th, 2022, the engineer attacked the group with a Swiss Army knife after they heckled him and taunted him with pedophile chants. When asked Tuesday about the violent confrontation that left 17-year-old Isaac Schumann dead from stab wounds to his chest, Mio said that he had tunnel vision and was in a fog during the heated situation. situation. He said that prior to the confrontation, he had volunteered to look for a friend's lost phone in the water before he interacted with the teenagers. So it, it, it's a whole, a whole freaking mess. I guess we'll start out with the opening statements, though. Honestly, he took the stand today. I, I just want to skip to watch this guy. And that's what somebody's PD said. They tried to drown him. Supposedly, they tried to drown him, too. So let's, let's start with the opening statements. Do you know where we can watch the whole video? I don't know, Raquel. I found the most complete thing that I found was this three-minute video that's on Twitter. I can... I can post it on Discord if you want the link. I'll email it to you. All you have to do on Twitter is type uh, Apple River Stabbing. But I even hear that the three minutes is not the whole video. There's other videos here that I have. Let me see. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, something I had here. Where'd it go? There's body camera. This is the interrogation. We could check that out too. We can watch this. Well, this is this is body camera as well. So I'm ready. Gonna... <coughs> yeah, I don't know. I I'll, the most complete thing I've seen is three minutes and something, and then I hear that throughout the trial they show bits and pieces, which annoys me because and maybe I'm, maybe the jury will be able to get to see that, but I'm just like, I want to see the whole video. I don't want to see these like bits and snips and pieces of it. Senseless and horrific acts of violence. This is the prosecution. When all Nikolai had to do was walk away. That's what you're going to see in this case. You'll see he eventually did walk away, but not until after stabbing five people. As Judge Waterman said, my name is Carl Anderson. My co-counsel, Brian Smestad, and I represent the state of Wisconsin in this case. It's our duty to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Nikolai Mew 
is guilty of all charges. <clears throat> You're going to hear in this trial that Nikolai said it was self-defense. But there's a video of what happened. You're going to see the video. You're going to see the sequence of events. You're going to hear a lot in the video. You're going to hear people yelling at Nikolai over 20 times, some version of get away, go away. You hear the boys, the teenagers yelling, get away, get away from us, get the fuck away, get back, get away from us, walk away, walk away. You're going to hear that there's another group of tubers, adults, who hear this and come over to help the boys. You're going to hear them yelling, go, get your ass and go, go, get your ass and go, 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 go. You're going to hear that Isaac's group and the group of adult tubers, I'll probably refer to them as the Carlson group throughout the trial, didn't know each other, still don't know each other. You're going to hear from both of those groups testify about what they saw. You're going to hear that there's six victims in this case. One that was punched, five that were stabbed, and you're going to hear from all those victims except Isaac Schumann. That's because on July 30th of 2022, Nikolai Mew killed him. It was the summer before Isaac's senior year of high school. He was living in Stillwater, Minnesota with his mom, stepdad, brother, and stepsister. He was looking forward to going to college after high school. The photo on his left is his last school photo from his junior year of high school. The photo in the middle was his last birthday. He went out to celebrate at a restaurant with his family when he turned 17. The photo on the right, he was showing off the new trailer he bought to his mom for his new car detailing business. On July 30, 2022, it was a nice day. The weather was in the 80s, perfect sunny day for tubing. You'll see body cam, but it was busy. There was a lot of tubers on the river. Isaac was tubing with five of his best friends. Alex Fang, Juwan Cockfield, Owen Palaquin, Ryan Nelson, Landon Weiner. And the last photo is Isaac. His friends called him Bike. These are, you'll see, uh, this is how they were dressed when they were on the river. These are screen grabs from that day. The other group you hear a lot about is the Carlson group. The only one who was stabbed out of Isaac's group was Isaac. The rest of the people stabbed and punched were from the Carlson group. Riley Madison was stabbed. Dante Carlson was stabbed. AJ Martin was stabbed. Tony Carlson was stabbed. Madison Cohen was punched. The other group you'll hear a lot about is Nikolai Mew's group. Some of these folks you'll hear more about than others. Like I, I heard his wife is there, was there, and I, I heard you testify too. Ariel, you'll see him in the video of the incident. Gilma, I expect you'll hear testimony from her. Eric Von Williams, you may see in some body cam, hear testimony. Nikolai Mew, that's Sandy Mew, Nikolai's wife time. Ernesto, you'll see in the incident video also. So Nikolai and Ernesto worked together. Um, a lot of these other people knew Nikolai through Ernesto or just met at Nikolai that day. Sergio was, he's in the far right. He wasn't actually in this picture. But. Oh, his ex-wife, they're divorced now. Mm. It was the last member there. Did she, did she take the stand for the prosecution? Mm. So all these groups were tubing on the Apple River. They're all out with friends. They're all drinking.
This is a map of the Apple River. Tubers started at River's Edge up on the top right, and they kind of tube in this snaky U shape down and then left and up. A lot of the tubers stop and did stop in this case at the hideaway. There's a bar there, there's a beach spot to hang out. The incident, the stabbings, occurred shortly before the tubers reached the 35 bridge that crosses over the river. You might hear it referred to as the Sunrise Bridge. And then the place where tubers exit is called the Village Park Exit. And you'll hear that the only group of these three groups that made it to the exit was Nikolai's group. You'll hear that shortly before the incident, the area was phoned, got knocked in the water. It was in a waterproof case. You'll hear testimony that he wasn't that worried about it. He said he has insurance for his phone, but Nikolai insisted on looking for it. So the group ends up waiting at the sand, at a sandbar. Nikolai goes downstream. He's got goggles and snorkel. He's, he's gonna look for the phone. Isaac's group is tubing a ways downstream. And you'll hear them describe that this older guy is tubing next to their tubes in extremely shallow water, getting really close to them, not really saying anything. He's got a, they all describe, will describe a strange look in his face. They're creeped out by him. You'll hear from several of them that he said something about looking for little girls. You'll hear from one or two that he said something about looking for a phone. So, and, and that's what I'm really interested about because the video that we saw, there was a guy claiming that like, oh, he's looking for little girls. Yeah, he's looking for, and then he goes, I, I, I literally have it on video. I wonder throughout this trial, maybe people that have been watching this, did they ever produce that? The video of him saying, I'm looking for little girls. He's got a, they all describe, will describe a strange look in his face. They're creeped out by him. You'll hear from several of them that he said something about looking for little girls. You'll hear from one or two that he said something about looking for a phone. Jawan, second from the left, filmed the main video in this case. He also filmed a nine second video wow. shortly before. So they made that up and lied about it. Wow. Before that main video. <clears throat> and in that nine second video, you'll see Juwan saying, he said he's looking for little girls, he's a raper. And Nikolai is walking away. He doesn't keep walking away. At the end of that video, he stops and he turns around. Two seconds later uh, is when the video starts. You're so amazing. The video Thank you, Mustard. Congrats on the baby. Your baby. <clears throat> so this story, I'm going to try not to pause too much because I want to try to get through this because I think this opening statements are like two hours. And there's like a lot I wanted to kind of, you know. But off rip, I really wish I knew what how the beginning of this started. You know, the altercation. You'll see at that start of the main video, Nikolai is walking towards the group of tubers. They're down in their tubes, the teenage boys, Isaac's group. In the beginning, when Nikolai is walking towards him, he's got his hand down on a pocket, the right of his shorts. You'll hear from people from his group that that's where he kept his knife. You'll see in the video that this he then starts to run. He runs at the boys who are down on their tubes. That's the only time in this video you'll see Nikolai run when he runs up on the group of teenage boys. He doesn't even run after stabbing five people. He walks away. There's his hand on that pocket. He's carrying his snorkel and goggles. 
That group in the background there, in the middle photo, that's the Carlson's group. And eventually come over in response to the yells of the kids. Nikolai puts his goggles in his mouth and grabs onto their tubes with two hands. You'll hear in the video, the boys are yelling, whoa, whoa, what's this guy doing, weirdo? You can see their reactions in the video. That's Alex Vang on the left. Nikolai drops his goggles and snorkel in the water. And then starts reaching in the water where they fall into the water. He starts walking around their tubes. They're yelling at him, get away, get away from us, walk away. They're also chirping at him. You'll hear Juwan saying, he's a pedophile. Nikolai says something back, you can't hear it in the video. He's standing, now Nick, this is facing downriver. So the direction they're tubing, that's that bridge going over the river in the back, background. Boys are yelling, get away. That's Isaac in the middle photo with the white half, purple chunks. That's Isaac again on the left photo, standing with his hands up, fingers splayed. You can see a gold bracelet on his left wrist. you see that again later in the video. At this point in the video, you hear the boys start to cheer. And that's because the, you'll hear from them that the Carlsons, some adults, were coming over to help. Those two people you see walking over are Madison and Dante. Madison's later punched, Dante's later stabbed. Isaac's bracelet. As Madison is walking over, she's yelling, go, go, go. Nikolai says, you'll hear it in the video, they took my snorkel. Madison's pointing and yelling for him to go. You can see in that pocket on his shorts, metallic clip, his pocket knife. Madison's pointing and yelling at him to go. Nikolai turns his back to her, looks back at the group of boys in the right photo. She drags him back away from the boys, back to her. We hear from her, that's why she went over them in the first place, was to try to get him away from the boys. It looks like she grabbed his arm, I guess, maybe. She keeps telling him to go. He starts smiling, he waves upstream towards his group. More women from the Carlson group come over. That's Riley in the middle, in that middle photo. She ends up getting stabbed. The right photo, you can see Nikolai puts his hand on that knife in his pocket again. He's smiling. The boys are laughing. They're drunk 17-year-old boys. They have nothing in their hands, as you'll see in the video. They're laughing and pointing at Nikolai. He's smiling. And then you'll see his hands start moving. You can't quite see what they're doing. You can see they come together in front of his waist. You can see behind him, there's nothing but clear and empty water. Oh, As Madison and Riley, two women, are talking to him, telling him to leave, he takes out his knife. He opens it, blade up, still smirking, looking straight at the women. You will not see Nikolai raise his knife and brandish it. You will not hear him yell at anyone to get back. You will not see him say anything at this point in the video after he takes his knife out. You will not see him try to take a step back or walk away. You will see him looking around, smirking, while continuing to hold the knife down by his side. 
While holding the knife, he looks around, looks back over at the boys. You can see Riley leaning over, trying to keep his attention. Nothing but clear water behind him. You'll see Madison's got sunglasses on. It's more people from the Carlson group come over. That's AJ in the yellow swim trunks. He gets ultimately stabbed, you'll see. Yeah, this this is the guy that, you know, they dub got disemboweled, which it looked like. He has a really pretty nasty, groovy scar on his on his lucky to be alive. That's Dante in the right photo. He gets stabbed. This is the kid that went and pushed him for the second time. As he pushed the guy on trial, the guy, like, like, I guess he, like, just moved his knife or whatever and it cut him or, you know, went to stab him. This entire video is oh. three minutes that's and 23 oh. seconds long. I guess that's how long it is, that video. The one that I, well, the one I have is three minutes and 20 seconds. It's not a very long video, but from the point in the video when witnesses say Nikolai punched Madison until you see Nikolai walking off after having stabbed five people is only about 20 to 25 seconds. It happens very fast in the video. You'll see that when you see it played in real time. You'll see the boys are loud, they're boisterous. You'll hear that in the video. There's a lot of yelling. Pedophile is looking for little girls. Go, get away from us. You'll not hear anyone in the video threaten Nikolai. You'll not see anyone raising fists to him before it turns physical. You won't see anyone besides Nikolai with a weapon. You don't see the boys touch Nikolai until after stabbings start. The next portions of the still frames is moments before the witnesses say it turned physical when Nikolai punched Madison in the face, who was one of the women standing in front of him. The Carlsons say he punched Madison boys, the teenagers, say he punched the blonde girl. They didn't know her name. They didn't know each other. It happens fast. Remember, up to this point, Nikolai already has the knife in his hand. After it pans, from the last frames I showed you, AJ was walking over in the yellow swim trunks. The video pans back to the middle. You see Madison and Riley are standing in front of Nikolai. The video pans to the left. You see the boys still laughing. That's Isaac in the background of the middle photo. He's pretty much just standing there in the background. Then you see everybody react and you hear it. You hear the change in the tone. And this is when witnesses say Nikolai punched Madison in the face. You hear Madison testify and Nikolai punched her in the face. Madison's sunglasses are no longer on her head. We are testifying that they got knocked off when he hit her. After Nikolai punches Madison, Dante, her friend, punches Nikolai. You can see that in the right frame. Again, Madison's sunglasses no longer there. Nikolai goes down in the water. You can see in the right photo, he gets slapped. It's shallow water, his butt's in the water, essentially. That's AJ in those photos, pushing on Nikolai's back. You'll see that the push doesn't really do anything. Nikolai gets right up with the knife in his right hand, lunges at AJ as AJ's going to push him again. As AJ is pushing Nikolai, Nikolai stabs into his lower abdomen with the blade up, and slices out his stomach. You can see in that right photo, he just missed his throat chin. In the middle photo, you can see AJ's stomach opened up on the bottom, right above the swim trunks. 
from the push from AJ, Nikolai goes down, lands in his butt in the water again. You won't see anyone in the video pounce on him at this point or approach him, try to hit him when he's down in the water. You see him try to grab at Tony. That's Tony. You'll hear that's Tony in the jean shorts. Tony walks by him. Tony has his back to Nikolai. And you'll hear Tony yelling in the video, get back, get back. You hear testimony from Tony that he thought he was breaking up a fist fight. So he's yelling at somebody off screen to get back. He has his back to Nikolai. Nikolai gets up, still with the knife in his hand. That person in the top left of the left photo is Riley. So after Tony, you hear him yelling, directing somebody off screen to get back. He turns over, turns to Nikolai and he's yelling, get back, get back. And you see him pointing in the video and yelling. And you see Nikolai's hand going back with the knife in it. He makes a stabbing motion off screen. Tony's yelling at him, get back. And then you see Riley's just been stabbed. That group in the background there that Nikolai's facing with nobody between him and that group is his group. That's his group of tubers. Yeah, Nikolai's group just left them for dead. All this shit going on. So is the prosecution saying that Nikolai punched the girl first and then that's when all this broke out? I mean, I, I didn't see that in the video. I, I did see Nikolai approaching them and like looking for something, touching their stuff or the tubes. I mean... It's a, it's a really really tough thing, man. I, I don't. I don't. This is like a. What do you want to pull for? What kind of pull do you guys want? Uh, oh, whether it's like self defense or not, it, it's really. Because if I'm surrounded, man, I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna defend myself too, but I'll, at the same time, I'm not gonna be starting shit just to start shit. So uh, we, we can do a poll, and we and then we can run with another one later if people's opinions change. You know, like the, the, the concealed guy that I that I that got me my concealed license. He was telling me, man, when you're carrying, I know this guy's carrying a, it's just a knife that can be considered, you know, a weapon too. But he was just like, you should try to avoid at all costs, try to avoid shit. You know, you're not you're you're trying to walk away from even if somebody's kind of confronting or starting shit with you. If you can avoid shit, try to avoid it. You know. Because the thing is, even if you're right, um, you know, the legal shit that you could have to possibly deal with, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, my life matters more. If I have to go through some legal shit, I got to go through some legal shit. But he was just saying, like, try to avoid if you can, you know. Tony, you'll see and you hear from him when he testifies that he's just yelling at Nikolai to go. And people are saying Nikolai should walk away, should walk away. I mean, that's true, but also these kids should have... Yeah, cause they to these, I don't know, man. Kids are kind of wild for me, too. Nikolai doesn't. Again, that's his group. In the right photo, the guy with the aviators, that's his friend, Ariel. We'll do a poll. Almost up to Nikolai. Nikolai doesn't walk back to his group. Instead, he turns to Tony... With the knife in his right hand, he yeah, stabs that him twice. Mama. You can see Riley bleeding in the background. Ariel, Nikolai's friend, is there as he's lunging the knife at Tony. That hand there on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see more clearly in the next still shots. Isaac goes to shove Nikolai. True, PD. See the gold bracelet. True. <laughs> As he's shoving Nikolai, Nikolai lunges out with the knife. Nikolai kind of stumbles back from the push. Comes back with his knife covered in blood 
and dripping wow. blood. You can see the women recoiling from him. Nikolai ends up by his friend Ariel as he's stumbling from the bush. I mean, I don't know about the all-out mass attack, stabbing five people, or whatever, however many people it was. You don't see Dante get stabbed in the video, but I expect you'll see evidence and testimony that it was after this. It's not until this point in the video, after he stabbed EJ, Riley, Tony and Isaac, that you hear people start react and realize what's going on in the video. You hear that they all suddenly saw AJ, and you'll see in a second what they saw. But up until that point, people didn't realize that Nikolai was stabbing people. You'll hear in the video the shock and disbelief as what just happened. Camera pans around, you see Nikolai looking in the direction to where AJ and Isaac are. Yeah, that's the guy right AJ there. AJ is in the water, wow. moving in his guts. Isaac's friends scatter and run. Juan, who's filming, runs back. Nikolai walks away. You can see at this point, if you recall the photo of Dante, he's got dark chunks on the bottom, white on top. He's got his hands on his torso and he's looking down. Nikolai continues to walk away. He walks by his friend Ariel. On that right photo, he's standing in front of Ernesto. He walks by Ernesto. On the right there, that's Alex Bing running to Isaac, who is collapsed in the water. You see AJ struggling. That's Nikolai by Ernesto. Nikolai continues walking. The camera pans away. When it pans back, Nikolai's off in the distance. Pans down a little bit. And that's what the middle photo is showing. And then They're walking off into the sun. And you see. In the right, sorry, in the left photo, you see he's approaching the right shore. Camera pans down, pans back up, he's walking away from the right shore. Isaac's group and the Carlson's group start helping each other, try to get to shore, get the victims to shore. Isaac and AJ who are collapsed. Nikolai starts walking back from the right over across to where his group is at the sandbar. Camera pans around the water. Water's running red. It's Isaac's hat floating by. Nikolai is almost back to his group. You can see people trying to help AJ and Isaac. You see a couple people from the Carlson's group start to call 911. We hear from the four people that were stabbed. And none of them saw Nikolai with the knife. They didn't notice he had a knife. They didn't know, they thought they were punched until they looked down and see all the blood. There's not gonna be any testimony on what Isaac saw. If he saw Tony get stabbed right in front of him when he went to shove Nikolai, because Isaac's not gonna be here to tell what he saw. You hear that some good Samaritans who are also tubing, some nurses, tended to AJ and Isaac until law enforcement and paramedics arrived. AJ, as a result, was disemboweled. He had to have emergency surgery. He was in the hospital for nearly a month and had to have numerous follow-up surgeries. Riley, who was in the Bikini in the middle photo was stabbed in the side. It sliced her diaphragm. She had to have emergency surgery. Tony was stabbed twice. One 
We'll describe how he kind of blocked it. He thought it was a punch coming in, so it just kind of scratched him, but the other one went into his torso. Isaac was stabbed in the chest and the torso, cut clean through two ribs, and sliced his heart. Died almost immediately. He was 17 years old. Dante was also stabbed in the torso. Nikolai returned to his group. You'll hear from people in his own group. He didn't really say what happened. He said, they took my knife. They stayed at the sandbar for a while, until a little while, sometime after law enforcement arrived. Multiple members of his group called 9 and 1. He did not. They reported they didn't know what happened, but multiple people were injured. One person from their group, Eric Von Williams, went over to help with the wounded. He also spoke with law enforcement when they got to the scene. He's the only one who did. At some point, Nikolai tells his group that they should just float to the exit. So they floated to the exit. You'll see that when law enforcement arrived on the scene, it was chaotic. Information they had was that an unknown subject stabbed five people. People didn't know where he was. They're all looking at AJ and Isaac and trying to help each other to shore. And nobody paid attention to where the guy with the knife went. There's dozens of tubers that continue to go through. There's tubers running through the woods, trying to find the guy who was stabbing people. Isaac and AJ, there was no place to get to them by road. Officers had to go to the nearest. They went to the 35 bridge and then they had to wade upstream to get to them, float them all on tubes. <clears throat> You'll see that when officers get there, there's bystanders, just other tubers intermixed with victims, intermixed with witnesses. Some of the witnesses were so emotional they couldn't even say, articulate what happened at first. So, Juwan, who filmed the video, he alerts law enforcement that he's got a video of it. And he pauses it at an image of Nikolai from the video. And that office, that deputy, circulates it around to other law enforcement who are responding. Officers go down to the exit. One deputy walks right by Nikolai and his group because he's looking for somebody who matches that photo. Was the report's all that they had where he was by himself. Deputy walks right by Nikolai, but then two citizens, one employee of River's Edge who had the photo and a friend of the owner of River's Edge alerted law enforcement that they think this guy matches the photo. Nikolai is apprehended. Members of the group asked, why is he being detained? We have the wrong guy. This is how he was dressed when they law enforcement made contact with him. You'll see in the body cam, Nikolai doesn't really show any emotion when he's taken into custody. You'll see a video of Sheriff Knudsen when Nikolai is in the back of a squad car. Sheriff Knudsen goes to check on him. How are you doing? You're doing all right. Nikolai says, what's going on? I hear somebody got stabbed. And I fit the description. Nikolai is later told by officers that he's under arrest for homicide and attempted homicide. Ultimately, Nikolai is interviewed by Lieutenant Randy Hart. That video in that video, you'll see the recording of that interview. His version varies drastically from the video of the incident. The interview is about 45 minutes long. We get to see that video, but I'll highlight some portions of it. When Nikolai is interviewed, 
He's not told there's a video. Lieutenant Hart shows him a screenshot, that one that went around the law enforcement. She asks if he knew that they took his picture. He says, no, he didn't know that. And then he asks if she has any other pictures of him. What other pictures did they give you of me? So up to this point, Nick White told his group they should leave the scene of the stabbing. He put on the jacket and had sunglasses. He tried to walk by law enforcement at the exit. He said to Sheriff Knutson, I heard somebody got stabbed. And he was told he was under arrest for homicide and attempted homicide. So you'll see in the video, Lieutenant Hart is explaining he doesn't need to speak with her. Nikolai responds, or I can say it was, uh, it was, it was self-defense, self-defense. There's lots of people uh, that came to me, self-defense, and they produced two weapons when I took from them. And that's the only thing I tell you. They were, they hit me, they were on top of me. That's, I don't remember anything after that. I just remember I ran away. You'll see that Nikolai repeats over and over throughout the interview that they pulled knives on him. And because of that, he feared for his life. He also Ooh, repeatedly bad. says they knocked his goggles off his face. He says they're trying to pull his swim trunks down. And uh, they are uh, snorkeling, so they took my snorkel away. They threw it in the water. They grabbed my pants. One wanted to pull my pants down, and I grabbed onto them. And I don't know who that kid was, but he produced, he had a knife on, on him, and there was another knife, a longer knife, looked like a kitchen knife. They came, they grabbed my snorkel, and they threw it in the water. Those goggles are lost, they took them, they grabbed them off my face, and threw them in the water. Not only does Nikolai say repeatedly throughout the interview that they pulled knives on him, he says he did not have a knife. I feared for my life, there was the truth. And they started hitting me, pointing, pointed a knife at me, and another kid pointed a knife, I thought that was it for me. So actually I took it from, from one of the young kids, and I think that's when I swung back. When you watch the video, the only thing you'll see in other people's hands in that video are drinks, cell phones, and a vape pen. You'll hear testimony from both Isaac's group and the Carlson's group that none of them had knives. He fly again, and one had it in his hand, so I took his hand and I bent it, I poked him with his own hand, and I took him from his hand and then I swung, so I don't know who I hit. The lying part, I haven't watched the interrogation yet. I do have it up, like, a, the link, but I already lied. The whole lying thing is just bad, you know. You know, uh, they, they had knives, they were trying to stab me, I, I took the knife from the kid, and, and that that's bad. I just know that I took the knife from, from one of those kids. Lieutenant Hart asks, um, did you have a knife with you? No, no, absolutely no. Um, MSK says he lied, but so did every witness the state put on. Which I wouldn't doubt it. I haven't watched it, but I know some of you guys have watched it all. You know, they're going to want to help their friend out. I just wish with some of these cases, especially with this, like this guy would have just been at least, you know, the jury's going to see that up front about that. Nikolai says he's telling the truth that he does not know where his knife was. He says I had, he says he had one earlier to cut the string for the tubes right at the beginning. I left it on the, I don't even know where at, what I did with it. I either gave it to one of the people or I put it in my truck. To tell you the truth, I don't even know. I don't even know where it's at, to tell you the truth. Maybe one of the bags we had with it, with us, it may have been in, uh, I don't know, maybe I left it and put it back in the car. It really says he, everything happened fast. He doesn't know why they attacked him. I don't even know why they took my snorkel. Don't know why they wanted to pull my pants down. I don't know why they're being so mean. Why did they want to scare me with a knife? 
They're scaring people on the river. It's a family-oriented river with knives and what they did. I just grabbed the kid's knife. I didn't even know I was holding it right. I grabbed it from him because he tried to poke me with it. So I feared for my life. He says it over and over. They're pushing me, shoving, I tripped, I fell down. I got up and that's where I saw one of the kids there, the closest kid with the knife and I grabbed it. Again, you'll hear he was already told he was under arrest for homicide. Nikolai asked Lieutenant Hart, so what happened? Can you tell me what happened? Lieutenant Hart says, yes, four people went to the hospital with injuries. Nikolai says, oh my God. Lieutenant Hart says, and one person died. And Nikolai says, oh no. And I says, I don't know their names or their genders, I don't know. And Nikolai asks, is that because they fought each other? Again, you'll see this in the video of Nikolai walking off to the right shore before walking back to his group. You'll hear from Gilma Constanza, who was one of the tubers in his group, that as he walked back after the incident, he did not walk back directly to the group walked over to the shore across from them and threw something onto the bank. This is a, you'll hear from Chuck Coleman from the Sheriff's Office. It's a 3D rendering, this is a bird's eye view of it. These are approximate locations you'll hear on where things happened. The river in this image is flowing downstream or down to the bottom. So the bridge would be below this image. So, yeah, the initial contact location, then the attack location, this yellow thing here, Carlson Tubing Group, and Miu's Tubing Group, the guy t uh, on the trial, was all the way back here. Now, the interesting thing, the knife recovery is here. I, I, don't, I wonder if he ditched the weapon or what was up with that, or was that they got it off of him, or what's up with that? <coughs> The white, ins the white dot is approximately where the boys were when Nikolai first made contact with them. They continue to drift down a little bit. The Carlson's group is that pink dot. They also continue to float down, so at the time of the incident, they were more kind of uh, parallel with Isaac's group. And then orange dot is the sandbar that you'll see in the video where you hear that the Nikolai's group was. That star, you'll hear that's where law enforcement found the knife. This is that knife that was found on the shore. You'll hear that this knife was sent to Wisconsin State Crime Lab tested positive for blood. It was compared to DNA samples of the five people that were stabbed. It had DNA, Dante, and Isaac on it. By close to trial, you'll see that these were senseless and horrific acts of violence and all Nikolai had to do was walk away. At the close of trial, the state will ask you to find Nikolai Mew guilty of first degree intentional homicide of Isaac Schumann, attempted first degree intentional homicide of Riley Madison, AJ Martin, Dante Carlson, and Tony Carlson, <coughs> Battery of Madison Cohen. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, members of the jury, we are going to take a short recess. We'll come back at 2.10. Please take the jury out. All rise for the jury.
And uh, welcome back uh, to our Fox 9 streaming studios uh, here uh, in Eden Prairie as we watch uh, the opening statements uh, in the Nikolai Miu Apple River stabbing trial. Uh, that was uh, St. Croix County District Attorney Eric, um, Eric and or I should say Carl Anderson, excuse me. He uh, delivered about a 40 minute uh, opening statement calling the stabbing senseless. Uh, completely preventable, uh, asking this jury, when it is all said and done, to convict Nikolai Miu of all five counts he faces, including intentional first-degree murder, which would send Miu to prison for life. He's also asking this jury to convict Miu on four counts of attempted first-degree murder based on the behaviors that day. And as you saw, we, uh, we saw the screen grabs from the video that was recorded. Jawan Cockfield, a friend of Isaac Schumann, recording in the river that day. Oh. This encounter that certainly escalated. Also, okay, okay. they ended? Or well, they took a break? Let's see what happened. Please take the jury out. All right. Okay. Did he end or are they taking a break? Closing? This is the, not closing, but the defense now. I have a lot of mixed feelings. Look we'll forward to the uh, the next part. Mojo Rising, what's up? Video uh, that captures the entirety of this. Now it will be while knowing uh, stream. Just really, from I feel like the the lying part could hurt his his case. I mean, besides like the video, or whatever, but like just the whole. There's some people that feel very particular about somebody that lies, you know, and, I, and I, I'm somebody I have to see it for myself, right? So I haven't watched it yet. I do have the interrogation video. Um, but I, I'm just taking people's word for that, that I've watched the trial and they told me that he did give like different stories. You know, I, I don't know what somebody would do in that situation, but even, even in legitimate, like, Defending yourself type of thing. You could catch a case. Do you have money for an attorney? It's better to be alive than to deal with some bullshit, though, than to be dead for sure. I don't think these kids are going to kill him. But I mean, I feel like this day and age, two kids are wild as shit. Like these kids these days, too. I'm not trying to put down these kids. I, I don't know these kids personally. I'm saying in general, I, I'm saying even in my daughter's age bracket. I don't want my daughter hanging out with some of these kids because these people let their kids run rampant like animals. Like, I don't want your kid affiliating with mine Been seen in some of these situations, you know. But at the same time, too, teenagers drinking, getting high, probably, you know. I don't know. You know, you're the adult in the situation. It's really hard to say. And then the other thing, too, is that I'm surprised. That's all the video they have, the three minutes and whatever, with, because I, I thought I saw other people recording it too. I guess only one person was recording this. Where's the other? I feel like there's got to be more video. The kid said, that, oh, we got it on video. He said he's looking for girls. Is that the only video? These opening statements are really. Why do you even have a knife? Well, I don't know. I, I thought they said because to cut the tubes or to cut something. I feel like in those parts, there's nothing wrong with carrying a knife. You could carry a gun, you know, somebody might say, why are you carrying a gun? Because of the crazy shit that happens this day and age. I don't know what the laws are over there. Really designed to just sort of be uh, a, ready for Mr. Nelson's opening statement. A glimpse. Okay, yeah, so that's the you, opening Aaron. statement. Thank we're you, Eric. Uh, yep, we're going back to another Nelson, Aaron Nelson. I think that's what happened to mob mentality. I bet that happened to you. So now delivering Nikolai Mew's response. Testosterone, especially at that age. Here is your defense kids. opening statement in the St. Croix County Courthouse in Hudson. <laughs> Nick Mew standing in the river with 13 strangers. 13 drunk, angry strangers. 13 against one. 
They yelled and they screamed in order to attract a crowd. They got a crowd. They told lies to make the crowd angry. <laughs> He's looking for little girls. He's looking for little girls. They layered their lies. They made them louder to make the crowd more angry. Mm. He's a predator. He's a predator. They chanted. They pulled on him. They closed the space around him. They got up in his face and they pushed him. Somebody else pushed him and they pointed and they pushed and they pushed and they pushed. And when he put up his left hand, when he put up his left hand to block and protect himself as they're in his space, in his face, he puts up his left hand to protect himself. And then they got violent. They got violent. They knocked a grown man, punched him, knocked him into the water. And when he's down in the water, they come up on him and they hit him again when he's down in the water. When he tries to get up out of the water, they attack him from the front, smack him across the front of the face, while somebody else comes from behind and starts pushing him down. In that moment, he feared for his life. And he responded in self-defense. Let me show you what they did. Dante Carlson, who had earlier come over into that group, right? His dad had sent him over to help Nick. But the crowd got Dante going, and he was, it didn't matter. He was going to hit him. And when the opportunity arose, as Dante Carlson told you, will tell you, he laid him out. Knocks a grown man back off of his feet, where it's not just his butt. You'll see on the video, it's his shoulder, it's his head. He goes into the water. He didn't have a measuring stick. He wasn't figuring out what the height of the water is. He went in the water, because they hit him into the water. And when he's down, you'll see, he's down in the water. And Dante Carlson, who punched him with his right hand, right? He was so confident. He was so confident. Had his beer in his left hand. And then he's given a beat down with his right hand. He then runs around him as, Don, as Nick is falling into the water. And he's in the water. He runs around him with the beer in his hand because he knows he's got his group around him. And then he comes around and he smacks him again. You can see in the first photo, you can see the shadow of Dante's arm coming across. And you can see it hits him across the face and across the ear. That's not just a slap. That's a full hand. You'll watch the video. It knocks him down. And then when he's down, he's down in the water, you'll see A.J. Carlson, who you'll hear tells you that he came over there to mediate. But for whatever reason, maybe it's because of a crowd, maybe it's because of a mob, maybe it's some other mentality. But when this happens, he sees this old man down on the ground. He doesn't go to help him. He goes to push him from behind. And while he's pushing him from behind, look in the upper corner there, that's Dante's arm. You can see in the middle slide, that's Dante's head, hand smacking Mew across the front of his head. And then you'll see on the third slide, that's where he's extending through. So confident he's gonna beat this old man down that he keeps the drink in his hand. That's the close-up where you can see through there 
Dante Carlson hitting Nick Mew in the face while this friend attacks him from behind. You're going to need to make some choices in this case, right? Some, make some decisions. Some of the things that maybe that might help you to do. Let me just take a step right back, all right? Who is Nick Mew? Who's the man that they wanted to beat down on the river? We're going to tell you about that. How did he get there? What made him be in the river on that day, as we saw here earlier, who will tell you that story? And then lastly, why did this angry mob, this pack of players, why did they attack him? And we're going to tell you that. First, who is Nick, right? Nick's 54 years old, lives in Prior Lake. He's married, right? You see a photo of You'll hear from his wife, Sandy, okay? She's going to be a witness. She was there with him that day. Him and a bunch of other 50-year-olds went to go have a peaceful day on the river, right? Nick grew up in Romania, right? And when he was about 15 or 16, he immigrated over here. We're not going to get really into it. Romania was not a good place to be in the 80s. Communist dictator. All kinds of other bad stuff was going on. And Nick's dad, like a lot of people in the world, wanted to have a better place for his family to grow up. So they, as political refugees, were accepted by a church in Minnesota, and they came over to Minnesota. When Nick was growing up, his first language was Romanian. Because he lived in this communist dictatorship, he also needed to learn Russian. Because he was in Europe, he also learned to speak French. Because he's this pretty, pretty smart guy, he also learned Latin. Wow. So when he was 15 and 16, he comes over to the United States, and then he picks up English as his fifth language. He can speak fluid English. He's fine. But I think it's important for you to know that's not his first language. When oh, he, he graduates from high school in Minnesota, I see he where decides he now. wants to go on and further his education. And he goes to school in South Dakota. Oh, no. He becomes a mechanical engineer. And he works. He's worked as a mechanical engineer for years and years. Bit of a handyman, as I imagine a lot of engineers are, right? I don't think of myself as a, as a handyman. He's a handyman, good with tools, hangs out with tools. And you'll hear from other people how he's used tools in the past. And you'll hear, that he, as you'll hear on the tape, as he tells the police, you know, living a peaceful, quiet life in Minnesota, never been in trouble before. Him and some of his work friends, as all of us sometimes as adults, our circle of friends tends to be people that we work with. He has a group of friends, Amanda and Ernesto. They've been down the Apple River before. In fact, in fact, they've invited him before, and he's been down the river one time before, several, several years earlier. So they make a plan with all of those, the group of people that we saw, right? Oh, I forgot one thing here. Nick, like a lot of people, maybe as they get older, isn't of the best health. In 2020, he had a heart attack. And he needed to have quadruple bypass open heart surgery. So these are the photos of him recovering from that. And it took him some time. And he'll tell you how that still makes him feel fragile, right? He doesn't feel as fit as he was when he was 18 or 22. So he decides to get out on the river with his friends. These are some of the friends. And as you'll see in photos, right? He's in the water that day. It's warm that day. Sometimes he's wearing his sunglasses. Sometimes he's not. Sometimes he's got a hat on. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he has his shirt on. Sometimes he doesn't. This is the photo of the start, which is pretty much the exact same thing Wake he was wearing at the end. Um, his friends Amanda and Ernesto uh, 
asked him to come along. There's a lot of other adults that are coming, right? There's none of these, there's no 20-somethings, no teenagers. They pack food and coolers. Sure, they have a couple of beers, but it's really just a time to get together with their other adults and float peacefully down the river. Nick. Nick likes to snorkel, right? So he brought his goggles and his snorkel, right? That's just kind of who Nick is. He's a bit of an explorer, a bit of a curious mind, and he'd brought his goggles and snorkel. And you'll see a video of him prior to this where he's just kind of laying in the water, letting the water rush over him. Well, he kind of floats there with the goggles and the snorkel, and he's looking at the bottom of the water. Probably not a lot of exciting things at the bottom of the water in Apple River, but he was there to see it if there was something there. Before he leaves, he gets a call from his friend Ernesto, because Ernesto knows Nick and knows that Nick's a bit of a handyman and is like, hey, remember last time we had all those strings? We got all those strings, you gotta cut up stuff, you gotta do this. Can you bring that little pocket knife that you've got, that utility knife, I've seen you use it at my house. You've used it as a tool. Make sure you bring that, because we need to cut up some of the strings. So he does, gets, gets back, packs that up, brings it along, and sure enough, when they get there, they have uh, their provided strings, and the people you'll see, they tie up tubes, they tie up coolers, they tie up everything else, and he uses the, uh, his pocket knife to sometimes cut those up, right? You'll also see as he's going through on the river that day that his shoes kind of fall apart, right? And you'll see that pictures of his shoes, he's got strings, and he's tied them up, and he continues to cut with the little pocket knife that he has to make sure that his shoes, his footwear, are something that he can have. So they float down the river. All right, this is the group. You saw that photo already with uh, Mr. Anderson showed that to them, right? And again, here, here he has the hat on. Here he's got the hat off. Uh, you'll see later, not surprisingly, when he goes to snorkel, he doesn't have his sunglasses on. And sometimes when he snorkeled, he had his shirt on. Other times he took it off. Here's another picture of him on the river with the group. Again, has the hat back on, depending upon what the sun is like. So, how did he get there, right? Well, as we talked about, Ariel, his friend, loses his phone, right? And whether they wanted to look for it or didn't want to look for it, I don't know how that's relevant. I don't know how his wanting to go help his friend look for his phone is any way important. You'll get to decide that. But we know at the end of the day is it's uncontested. His friend lost his phone. And as you saw in some of those photos, they have these little bags that they put them on, and they didn't know if it was going to float or if it was going to sink. But the water between him and the other two groups was downstream. So if something went into the water, it would float towards where those other two groups were. So Nick used his head and walked where he thought the, the, snor or the uh, phone was going to float to, and he goes looking for it, right? Why would the, why would the phone float? Uh, wait, did the phone have a, a flotation device or something? Or? It, it could be, I don't know, it could be, I know there's, like with cameras, they have things, attachments, you could put like a little floaty thing. So if you drop it in the water, at least it floats up or something, you know? Right, and then while he's looking for it, he runs into another group, right? And this is the group that, that we're gonna talk about, two different groups, right? The first group he runs into is this group of high school, right? <laughs> Luffy. And you're gonna hear that they're drunk. Crazy. Oh, yeah. You're gonna hear that they were smoking stuff. Uh -oh. The one piece of evidence that we know- Oh, the case floats, is that what it is? For sure, is that at the time of the autopsy, Isaac Schumann's blood alcohol concentration was 0. 0.219. <laughs> yeah, that's a tripper. And if you ask his friends, his friends are going to say he was the most sober one in the group. So we have this group. They're drunk. They're loud. There's six of them. Okay, so the chat is saying he had a, there was a phone. Uh, there, it wasn't a bag that floats called the floater. Okay, okay. They're football players. They've run as a pack together before. And you're going to hear some videos. They're a quite confident group, right? And they see this man, this man that maybe others are going to judge upon his appearance. This group of six see him, and they start 
making judgments about him based upon what he looks like. He's an old man in the river with goggles, and they don't like it. So they start calling him names. Right? And there's a video, you're going to hear it, because they, they start harassing him, they start heckling him, they're basically trying to humiliate him. And Mr. Cockfield, one of the football players, he grabs his phone out and he thinks it's funny enough that he's going to record it. And you'll see that recording just before this, where he... Oh, the guy's really a football player. He too. says, grown man looking for little girls. And he thinks it's really funny. And then he screams out, Raper! He doesn't scream that out for his benefit of his five football friends that are with him. He screams mm. it out to draw a crowd, get other people involved. Now, Mr. Mew may or may not have heard that exact thing, but he hears them yelling and he turns around, and what does he see? He's looking for a phone, right? We know that. And when he turns around, he sees somebody holding up a phone. Maybe he's wrong, maybe he's mistaken about why they're holding up the phone, but he sees them holding up a phone, so he turns around to approach them, because he thinks that's the phone he's looking for. Been looking for this phone, it floated down this way, these kids are yelling, and he starts jogging towards them. As you saw, as he jogs toward them, he's an unfit 260 pound man trying to move through the water, and he picks up his feet for about four steps, and then he reaches his hands out to grab their tubes, and when he does so, he puts the snorkel in the goggles in his mouth. Maybe they thought it was an act of aggression. I don't really think it was. You'll get to see it and watch it. But we know nothing happens after that. Because as soon as he goes and approaches, the goggles and the snorkel drop. He loses them and he immediately starts looking for them. That's about five seconds into the video. He starts looking for them and they start yelling at him, get away, get away, get away. So if this is the this is the tubes, right? You as the jury, you're looking downstream this way, right? Nick is standing here in front of the tubes. He looks, he comes up, and then he walks to the other side of their tubes. And he's now on this side of their tubes, downstream from them. He's downstream because that's where he thinks the goggles and the snorkels come. And did he tell the police officer that he thought they knocked the goggles and the snorkels out of his hand? Yes, he did. Is that what he believed happened? Yes, it was. Is that what really happened? No, that's not what happened. And the great thing you're gonna be able to see in this case is there's a video. There's a video that we can check everybody's testimony against. And you know what, Riley Madison got it wrong. Dante Carlson got it wrong. Madison Cohen got it wrong. Anthony Carlson got it wrong. Pretty much every witness, when you compare their human memory against the video, they get it wrong. Because we're humans. We can't get it as good as the video does. So he got that wrong, but he's still nevertheless looking for his goggles. His goggles are down in the water. He's looking for it, right? And he starts walking around there. There's nothing that prevents this group of football players who are screaming at him from just walking around. He's one man, maybe two feet wide. And you hear from there, they talk about him walking away, but they can just walk, just float on by and leave this man alone. But they stay to harass, they stay to heckle, they stay to humiliate. Because he starts walking away from them. And if you watch and you count, you watch it enough times, he takes about 10 steps away from them. And it's sometime during those 10 steps, it's sometime during those 10 steps, when that group says, you got 10 seconds. 10 seconds. That's what this group of drunk teenagers says to that old man. And he's walking away at that point. And then what you'll see when the video comes back, he walked away and followed. They followed, they didn't go around they went right up to him where he had walked away. Now remember, as he's walking in this direction, his group is 200 and some feet that way, 280 feet that way. This water is deeper. As he starts walking away, it gets into deeper water. 
He doesn't have his goggles, doesn't have his snorkel, still can't find the phone. He's getting farther away from this group. The drunken teenagers are yelling at him, and now they keep following. Now, this video, all right, we're going to show some slides from the video. And it's super important, obviously. We're very thankful that we have it so that you will know exactly what happened. But what you got to remember is the video is taken by Juwan Cockfield. It is from Juwan Cockfield's perspective. It's from his point of view, right? It makes it obvious. And so the person that we're watching oftentimes is Nick Mew, right? But you need to know, which is obvious, that the video is not from Nick's perspective. We're not watching it from Nick's perspective, we're watching it from somebody else's perspective. And why is that important? Because the judge is gonna tell you, right? It's important because at the end of the case, you'll need to determine the reasonableness of his beliefs from his point of view. You'll need to determine the reasonableness of his beliefs, beliefs, not actions, you're here to determine his beliefs and the reasonableness from his point of view. So as you're watching that video, you're gonna be asked at the end to be like, what would someone in Mew's position from that standpoint, what would they feel? What would they believe? Let me just quickly read to this, right? If I can, the law of self-defense, the in determining reasonableness, a belief may be reasonable even though mistaken. In determining whether Nick Mew's beliefs were reasonable, the standard is what a person of ordinary intelligence and prudence would have believed in Nick's position under the circumstances that existed at the time of the alleged offense. Not 30 seconds before, not a minute before, at the time of the alleged offense. The reasonableness of Nick's beliefs must be determined from the standpoint of Nick Mew at the time of his acts and not from the viewpoint of the jury now. So I say that to you just so you know when we're looking at the evidence what you're going to be asked to do at the end. So they, right, they get him into, the, him into this position and this is 50 seconds into the video. He's walked 10 steps away, they come up to him and approach him and cut him off. So he walks away one time, they follow him. But Nick, right, sees, right, so he's here, he's got a group of people here, and he looks off to his left, and he sees a group of adults. There's two adults coming this way. Great, adults, not drunk teenagers. Adults are coming this way. He doesn't continue to engage with this. He gets and starts walking over here. He walks over to engage with the adults in the hope, as I think most of us do, when we see perhaps another adult and we're dealing with a group of drunk teenagers, maybe I can appeal to reason. These are adults. And when he walks over this way and the path down the river is wide open, those drunk teenagers follow him. Follow him over here where he then gets confronted by Madison Cohen. And Madison Cohen is not listening. She's not there for an appeal to reason. Her immediate words are to Nick Mew in his face, go, get the fuck out, go. And you'll see Nick's reaction is kind of like, as you heard from the, look, they have my goggles, like, why are you in my face? What's going on? And you can see, they'll call it a smirk, they'll call it a smile, Look, there's 4,819 frames in that video. 4,819 frames. I have no doubt that you can pause on one of those 4,819 frames and find a photo where somebody's mouth is making a particular shape of anything at any I, I do agree with that as far as, like, you can find it. When they were like, oh, he's smiling. He might have been, I don't know, but, like, you really could take a still. That's why I was like, they need to just play the whole video. You can take a, take a still image of me doing whatever. It, it looked like I'm smiling, laughing, upset, whatever, you know. Big time. Is he smirking? Is he smiling? You watch, you decide. Because he looks perplexed. 
he's immediately confronted, and he starts to give an explanation, and Dante Carlson tells him, it doesn't matter. Right? Appeal to reason? Nope. We're not doing that. That's kicked out the door. There is no appeal to reason at all. And while this is going on, the Carlson group, right, who sent two people over, also has Quentin Carlson, and he's an older duck. Madison Cohen, Dante Carlson, A.J. Martin, they're in their early 20s, which is fine, they're certainly adults, but that might be different than somebody in their 40s. Quentin Carlson, he sees what's going on, and what he says, I was worried about the group against one guy. I was worried that they were gonna gang up on him and something bad was gonna happen to the old guy. So I told my son Tony and Dante to go make sure they don't attack that old guy. That's not somebody looking at it from Nick's perspective, but that's somebody who can see maybe what Nick sees, hear what Nick hears, and his thought is, ooh, something bad's gonna happen to that old guy. So he sends over his kids. And when they come over, right, the high school group continues in what I think we now know, it's a new term, is they gaslight him. They just start making up lies in order to affect his perception of reality and everybody else's perception of reality. As soon as that group comes over, that high school group says, he's a predator. And then immediately they're like, he's looking for little girls, he's looking for little girls. There will be zero evidence that there were ever little girls even anywhere near on that river. Zero. There's going to be zero evidence that he was looking for the book. But they drum up, right? They get this crowd going. They've got the two people here, and they start yelling that. And then the crowd gets to be more, right? As this is going on, it's about 1.13, 1.15 into it, where they start screaming at him. He's looking for little girls. And then you'll see as he's standing here, after he's walked away from that group, he walks over to the adults, he's kind of pointing at them like, I got my snorkel. And they confront him, and as he's standing there, he turns his back on her, and them, and he just stands here. And as he's standing with his back turned, and the path down the river is wide open, instead of just walking on by, Madison Cohn decides she's gonna put her hands on him, and she grabs him and starts pulling him pulling him and you'll see he turns around and immediately looks to his hand and says, don't touch me. Don't put your hands on me. They don't walk away. They stand right there. The crowd, the drunk high schoolers, continue to say he's looking for little girls. Somebody says, is that what he said? And then it changes to the next lie is, we've got it on camera. We've got it on camera you're gonna see that they downloaded that phone. There ain't nothing like that on the camera. There ain't nothing like that on the Ooh. camera because that's not what happened. Ooh, okay, okay. Because these drunk teenagers were gaslighting him and they're enticing a crowd. You keep referring to them as drunk teenagers too. You just keep like trashing them. I think the client was drinking too. I don't know what his alcohol levels were. But I don't think they did tests or not, but. Nick stands there. He's now got people all around him, right? They're chanting at him. He's a predator. He's a predator. He's all alone. He's getting, it's getting louder. He raises his left hand to his group. Like, we need some help here. Like, something's going on, right? And when that happens, you'll see the camera. Jawan Cohen turns the camera to show where he's waving to. So the high school group has knowledge that Nick Mew, who's standing right here, doesn't want to go that way. Nick Mew, who's blocked right here, wants to go that way. Because that's where his group is, because that's where everybody looks. And you'll see on the camera, Madison Cohen, as she stands and he waves, she turns and looks and sees he's got some friends. So does Madison Cohen say, yeah, why don't you just go that way? She doesn't. What she does is she reaches to her friends and says, hey, get over here. She calls in more numbers. She calls in more numbers to confront him. Because at that point, it was eight against one, and she wanted more. So she brought over Riley, she brought over Janelle, she brought over Gabby, and then she calls for Anthony, and then she calls for AJ. 
And then it's those 13 people that surround him, right? And they're standing there, and you're going to see they're all around him. They are relentless in what they're yelling and screaming. From his standpoint, this is like, what is happening? What world did I just step into in which there's this group of drunk kids, drunk teenagers, who they want to say kids, I get it, but you saw those pictures. They're all bigger than Nick. Nick's smaller than he was then, right? But he hasn't grown any. He's just shrunk more, right? But he's not a big, fit guy, right? They're screaming. They're chanting, right? And at that point, yes. Nick, outnumbered 13 to 1, reaches in his pocket, finds his pocket knife, opens it up, and stands there with it. He doesn't brandish it, no, but he doesn't hide it. He's standing there with it. His belief at that point is, I don't want to use this. I don't think showing it to him is going to help. But if something happens, I need to, I don't know what's going to happen. So he's standing there with the knife. And as he's standing there with the knife, Riley Madison is right in front of him, and she pushes on him. You'll see that in the video. And then next to her, who's blocking him from his people, is Madison Cohn. She takes her right hand, and she pushes his left shoulder, and he has to go back. She pushes him back. And while all this is going on, the group of drunk teenagers are screaming, chanting, yelling. The numbers are getting bigger. They come over towards him. Numbers right. are getting bigger. They push him again. Oh, more people. They block his path. And this is the, the same. That's what it looks like. You're mute. You're looking upriver to see where your safety is. Behind you is deeper water. You've walked in that direction before. You appealed to reason, and they said it doesn't matter. They're up in his face, right? And Madison Cohen's pushing and pointing at him, right? And Mew's standing there. He's got the knife in his right hand. He doesn't use the knife. He's standing there while they're pushing and pointing at him, right? And when he does that, all of a sudden, that's when Dante Carlson gets violent, right? He's predisposed for violence, I submit to you. That's the entire purpose of the gaslighting of getting the crowd there, of yelling with the crowd, of getting it all jacked up, is Jawan Cohen. Wanted to record a viral video. Hmm. Which... You know, you, you do have to be careful how people will egg you on. You, you, look, you even look at the J. Cole situation, which a lot of people probably don't know about, but just letting people egg you on, or even the crowds of people you hang out with, you know? Like, I, I talked about I'm not going to go too much into it, but like many, many years ago before my daughter, when I first came to Florida, I was hanging out with a group of people, young people. They were all high, in high school. Well, we, were, we were just graduating high school, but, and, uh, you know, like every time I'd go out to the club it was like a problem. Uh, like everybody's looking for like a fight or something. And every time I'm like in this situation, I'm like. Damn, we're, like, we're not even going out to these places to like have fun and drink. It's and it was a hip hop thing too. That was when I first, you know. So that's when I started. After that, I was like, let me get into a little bit of like, um, you know, like house music. It was just such a better vibe. But when I first came to Florida, it was like this hip hop shit. Everybody's trying to fight and argue and like this bravado shit. And there was one night that we all got into like a situation at the club. Because I guess a friend of mine bumped into another guy and the drink spilled on the other guy's girlfriend and they're going back and forth and, oh, you know what? Let's take this outside. Yeah, let's take it outside. And I guess I'm with the group, so I got to go out with these people. And we go outside and apparently the kid that was upset was a part of a college. <laughs> their whole college, all their, they like outnumbered us by two. And uh, like t there was twice as many. And I remember one of the guys in our group that I, I don't know if you could consider him the leader, but like everybody kind of like, oh, he, you look up to him kind of. He was the most cowardly person. All he did was sit back and do nothing. Not that I wanted to fight, not that I wanted to be in a situation, but one of my friends, he was trying to like 
there was like two groups, like lines of people on each side. And one of our, this nice guy, Imran, he was like trying to walk. Oh, come on, guys. Just, we don't need to do this. Let's just you know, walk away. It's just about peace and stuff. He was the first one to get punched. <laughs> and when he got hit or punched or whatever, then he started getting dragged across the floor. And a couple of my friends jumped in. And at that point, the only reason I went in, because I really wasn't going to, is because I saw my friend getting dragged across the floor. And while he was getting dragged, somebody else started hitting him while being dragged. And so I jumped in and I started hitting the other guy. Because I'm, like, I'm not going to let my friend go out like that. And the one guy that our group thought was like the person, the OG, whatever, he was at the back wall and he like disappeared. I'm like, well, what the fuck, this motherfucker go? <laughs> he was gone. <laughs> I was like, wow. Anyway, thankfully, like the the cops came and like they broke up the fight. Somehow, I got street cred. I was like, oh Mel, like well, we never thought. I was like, I got the one time I got street cred, and I remember on the ride home because my friend was driving. The one that bumped into the guy and the drink spill, his cousin was like, yo, take me to my house. I'm going to get my gun and I'm going to come back. And I was like, well, you could just take me home because I'm not coming with you guys. And that's when I realized I was like, I got to get away from these fucking people that I'm hanging out with because it's not it's never fun. It, it's it's always some drama shit. And so I had I, I stopped hanging out with those people. Some old man was getting beat down and he was going to get it on tape. He created that world. He put him in that world. I object a lot of this is argument, not summarizing. <laughs> Stan, please focus on what you anticipate the evidence will show. That's what the evidence is going to show, right? Dante Carlson has told you before, and he'll say, it doesn't matter, right? At that moment, that's when Matt, or that's when Nick Mew raises his left hand to protect himself. He's raised it before to call for help. I think I missed it. He raised another time to call for help a second time. And now they're crowded around him in his face. He raises his hand to protect it. And that's when they get violent, right? It's a push, not a punch. It's a push. I agree with that too, Susan. When I was growing up, he was respected grown up. But they also respected you. Yeah, they're, they're, that's gone now. There's no such thing anymore, it seems like. Yeah. To protect himself, not a punch. The evidence. You'll watch that video. You might watch it 20 times. It's not on the video. There's no punch on the video. She's standing there yelling. And when she's standing there yelling, there are two people between her and Nick Mew. He's got the knife in his right hand, right? It's not on the video. There's no physical evidence. She says he punches her with his right hand. He's got the knife in his right hand. There's not a mark on her. You're gonna see from John Schultz, his video. He spoke with her right then. He's right in her face. He's got a body cam. You'll get to see the body cam of her face and she not a blemish on it, not a mark on it. Doesn't support that he punched her. Third thing, multiple evolving stories. Listen to what the witnesses say. Who really says is there a punch and what position were in they in to say it? Because here's what they said before. Quentin Carlson, he told the police, she said he was punched. She said she he punched her, but they said it was a slap. Everybody else initially said it was a slap. Gabby, one of the witnesses, says he smacked her with his left hand. She's consistent with he raised his left hand. Uh, Mr. V Alexander Vang, one of the high school kids, says he hit her with an open hand with his left hand. AJ, he says he saw him pull her hair, which nobody's going to say. That's just wrong. Nobody's going to say anything along those lines. Dante... The person who laid him out after he said that spoke with the police. And initially what he said to the police is he saw, I saw Mew make a swift motion to Riley Madison. Then he says, I saw Mew make a motion towards Riley Madison. 
Then he says, I saw Mew make a swift motion to Riley Madison. And he says a fourth time, swift motion, Riley Madison. I don't know what he's going to say when he comes up there now, but what he said before isn't a punch, and it wasn't to Madison Cohn. That's when the violence begins, right? They attract the crowd. They moved in closer. Now, one of the things you're going to want to ask, mm. and we will ask that, is when this happens, this group of 13 is around, and the old man gets knocked, and he's down in the ground. Listen to the video. Is there anybody in the group that says, whoa, this is out of hand? No. You'll hear when he gets knocked on the ground, the volume goes up. The cackling and the laughing goes up. In the videography. So Harry Potter ha has been watching the whole trial and says that equally the endless lies from the witnesses, sorry, instigators will also hurt them. So yeah, I, have, I haven't watched the trial, but I totally believe it because they're probably trying to protect their friend that sadly passed away. I could totally believe that. Photographer pushes people away to get in closer to document the beatdown as well as he can. This isn't somebody that's just taking a video on the side. And then again, we move around. Dante Carlson is confident enough to still have the beer in his hand while this happens. Hugh's response is in self-defense, right? People come at him, and he makes a quick, short jab motion. He believes he has to use the knife because he's outnumbered. A.J. Martin once. Riley Madison once. Dante Carlson twice, but he only has two stitches. Oh. Isaac Schumann once. Damn. Dante Carlson once. When they come at him, he gives a quick jab. They back up. He doesn't lunge for them. He doesn't follow them. He doesn't recklessly swing it around. They come at him after they gave him a beat down, and he jabs up. When even Brandy Hart, I think, you're going to hear from her, right? When Mr. Troff, as he asked her questions, when people attacked you, he responded. She agrees with that. So, what happens is pretty much all on video. Thank you, Chris. Right? At That's the end, the judge is going to read you that jury instruction similar to what he did about credibility. And how much of credibility is going to play a part in this trial is going to be up to you. You guys are the finders of fact. You decide what happened. But I'd submit to you, it's all on video. Pretty much know what happened because it's on video. All right? So, we can talk about credibility. Nick spoke with the police, right? He told them he was afraid. He told them he feared for his life. He told them he was acting in self-defense. He also told them, I don't really remember anything. And he lied to the police about the knife. He did. He lied about the knife. It was his knife. He brought it. He was outnumbered. He believed he needed to use it. The truth is, he used it because he was surrounded by that angry mob and he was afraid, right? They gave him every reason to be afraid. When their attacks stopped, he walked away. When they stopped, kept coming at him and every one of them coming at him, right? He responded like a victim of trauma response. You'll hear from witnesses in his group who will say he looked like he was in shock. He was white as a ghost. From his perspective, right, he had just been attacked by an angry mob who was trying to kill him, and he, he, got, his way, he got out of there. So as he walks back, he still has fear, right? It's not something that just goes away. That fear is deep inside of him at that point. 
And as he walks away, he wants nothing to do with the group that just attacked him. He wants nothing to do with the knife. And he tosses it up onto the shore. Uh, Maybe not the best decision. Probably not. Maybe not how he should have responded. And that, that and that's what we saw on the map, where like the, the knife was. So my biggest, let's just taking like removing the stabbing and somebody dying. One of the biggest things, right? But like the whole a lying, lying, lying. Which I, I've heard the witnesses lie to in the stand, and I have a hard time believing that's all there is. This three minute video. That lying might hurt him, but you know if the prosecution sees through the witnesses as well. After this, it's almost done. This opening statements. I think what we should do is watch his testimony. He testified today. He took the stand. So I, I, I think we should see how he did on the stand today. But he was suffering from serious shock and trauma at that time. That's what he did. It's not going to be a contested fact. He looks back to his group, right? And they'll say that he's wide eyed. He's white as a ghost. Um, remember, he'd just been repeatedly. By the, by the way, that typing is the courtroom. <laughs> they hear constant typing. He hit in the head, pushed down into the water. His body continued to respond in that way. We and if his head really was pushed down in the water, I, I would take that as you're trying to kill me. I, I, if that's what happened. He walked away. He knew he'd done some quick jab motions. He didn't know the extent of anyone's injuries. Did he hear them yelling? Sure. They'd been yelling for two minutes, screaming and yelling at him. He had been in trauma at that point. He didn't know what the yelling was about. He didn't know that anyone had died. Maybe he should have. Okay, fair enough. But in that situation, would you expect him who'd just been attacked and responded in just short quick jab motions to know the extent of everyone's injuries. They go back and everyone's like waiting, waiting, waiting. Traffic on the river pretty much shuts down and they wait there. When the police come by and kind of basically move everybody along, his group moves along to the exit. He's got his hat and his sunglasses and his shirt on just like he did at the start of the trip. Right, he's been in shock. They'll tell you he was cold. So there's really, these are the three things that you need to think about, right? One, what happened? Don't think it's gonna be a big mystery. It's on video. And I hope that that's helpful to you. Because the facts, I don't think are gonna be very contested. Two, you are gonna be asked, what did Nick believe? Right? He told the police, and he'll tell you, he feared for his life. In that moment, against that group who were violent with him and knocked him down, he feared for his life. Right? The video evidence supports this. Right? And I'd ask you rhetorically, what other reason is there? What other reason could there be? They came at him. He, he was in fear. He responded. The last question. Were his beliefs reasonable? I don't want to get the labor of the point about the law. Right? Can't find it right away. But it's from his viewpoint, right? It's from his standpoint. belief may be reasonable even though mistaken. When determining whether Nick Mew's beliefs were reasonable, the standard is what a person of ordinary intelligence and prudence would have believed in Nick Mew's position under the circumstances that existed at the time of the alleged offense. So what do we know that might help you to decide that, right? We know he walked away and they followed. We know he tried explaining to them and they said, it doesn't matter. We know they told lies about him to incite the crowd. We know he knows that those were lies and he was watching as this crowd gets louder 
and more intense and bigger. We know they cut him off from where he wanted to go back up to his wife and his friends. We know that somebody else that was watching, who is kind of like Nick, a little bit younger, about the same fitness level though. And when that person, Quentin Carl. Isabella, Isabella said, I was kind of disturbed in the video when the person doing the video said, for the culture. Yeah. And sees what's going on. His first thought is, Did say that. there's something bad that's going to happen to that old guy. We know he was surrounded, we know he was outnumbered, and we know that this environment was right for violence. That's the, violent, that's the environment they carry. And we know that Nick is fragile. He believed he was fragile. This is somebody who went through open heart surgery within a couple of years. He didn't have fitness. Attacked him, kept attacking him, and they gave him every reason to believe they weren't going to stop. Were his beliefs reasonable? This is Isaac Schumann. I don't know. I'm sure he is a wonderful man, wonderful human being. We're going to hear a lot about it, but in this moment, on this day, on that river, when he was drunk, he tried to strangle Nick. His hands were on his throat, Ooh, I to... he was pushing up against Nick Mew, and Nick reaches out as he's falling back. That is what Nick did. His belief at the time and he's being strangled after being constantly attacked because he needed to get out of And the only way that he could do that was with his knife. He believed his life was in danger. And we submit to you under those circumstances. That's reasonable. At the end of the trial, we're going to come back up here, right? We'd be back up here, and we're going to ask you to return a verdict of not guilty on all counts. The judge will tell you on that last day. He'll tell you the law. If you can reconcile the evidence upon any reasonable hypotheses, Consistent with Nick's innocence, you must return a verdict in that guilt. Okay, just one more time. The judge will tell you if you can reconcile the evidence on any okay. hypothesis in this case, is he feared for his life? The reason for that environment. In that world, he believed it in that moment. And that's reasonable, because anyone in that situation would have believed the same. So at the end, we'll ask you to do your duty. Okay, so that was the defense. I was asking Harry Potter like what, what she thought was the best part. You know, there's the interrogation, the the guy that was disemboweled testifying. And there's also this guy that took the stand that's being accused of murder. Um and she replied All the teens lying on a stand, cringe worthy. <laughs> and I think Harry's pretty fair. I think fairer than me. You know, I'm a little sometimes. So, wow. Um, let's watch. Let me see. Let's uh, let's watch some of the testimony that he did tomorrow. I think tomorrow is probably going to be closing arguments and they're going to rest their case. I think the defense. The only thing is this guy's testimony is like three hours long. Mr. Nelson. Uh, 
I don't I don't know that I can do three hours tonight. Let's do a little bit. We'll see how far we get in. I want to hear the I really want to hear the prosecution and the and the well I guess they'll start with the defense and then the prosecution, I guess, right? I want to hear some of this. And then maybe tomorrow I don't know if they're gonna do closing arguments. I have one thing to do tomorrow, the YouTube manager, but then after that I'm free. Well, but then in my there's no school tomorrow too. We'll see if we could join in for a little bit tomorrow. I, I want to watch the closing arguments and whatever other testimony. You're the Nick Mew we've been talking about for the past seven days. Yes, sir. Nick, I want to mm. right away talk to you about uh, exhibit number 104. If I could have the screen. You were on the Apple River on July 30th. Yes. I want to ask you about this exhibit. Yeah. And hoax in the chat too. He says there's three kids who lied. I see. Damn. Wow. Which says it's from frame 2592 at 149 into the video. Have you seen this before? Oh, I must They're already rested. Okay. So a verdict watch tomorrow, I guess. They're just deliberating. Yes. Do you remember that time? in your life when you were on the river in that position as shown in that photo yeah it, it almost doesn't even look like him wow graph yes has it been a, has it been locked up all this time this sometime this after that did something happen to you yes were you punched and not be, not after, before sometime that. after this were you after punched? that yes okay i want to talk about the time between this and the time that you get punched okay okay um, exhibit number 104 there is on the, uh, with it. Where are you on that? I'm, uh, <clears throat> standing in front of two, two ladies. And which, if you were going to just describe the symbol on exhibit 104 symbolizing you, which one is that? The one with the M. Okay. Do what color? The, do you want the Blue. irritator? Um, at that point in time you said there's two people in front of you who are those two people in front of you a blonde lady to my left and a red head uh, a red hair lady to my right were there other does this accurately reflect how you remember roughly people in general around you yes the blonde lady in front and the uh, other woman you understand now Wow, so yeah, AJ says that he's been locked up all this time. I didn't know that. So, let's see. I think she said two years. Wow, yeah, he looks different. Like, he's lost lost a lot of weight. And, yeah. That through the trial that the, the blonde woman is named Madison Cohen. Yes. Can we use her name when possible? Yes. And the uh, you said red-haired woman. Her name's Riley Madison. Can we use her name when possible? Yes. Possible? So when Riley and Madison in, are standing in front of you at that point, just before you get punched, right? What are they doing? They're yelling at me. Uh, at one point, they were pointing down river and saying, go, go, get away. Some ex what are they doing with their hands? They're touching me. When they're you say touching you, is that something gentle? No, they're pushing. Uh, so. Uh, Madison, she pushed against my left shoulder. She, she pushed against my chest. She was pointing her finger right at my face. She was yelling at me very close to my face. Um, Riley had her left, had one of her arms, I believe it was left hand, on my right arm, squeezing and pushing me back. And you, when you, yo, bail was two million. Holy ish! Just gave wow. that description. You put your hands a uh, distance apart. Can you show us that again? How far away were they? About a foot. Okay. Less than a foot. You've something. heard it described through trial as in your personal space. Would you agree with that? <laughs> yes, right in my face. I would describe. When that was happening, what did it sound like to you? The volume was very, very high. Um, Let me ask you about how your body was responding in that moment when people are pushing you, poking at you, the volume is high. How's your heart, did, could you tell us about what your heart rate was? 
Oh yeah, uh, my heart rate was getting really high. Um, my my breathing was getting very high. I was. Uh, How about uh, your vision? Did, did you yeah. have normal vision in that moment? No, no. At that moment, uh, because of the situation, I was getting tunnel vision. And can you describe what you mean by you say in tunnel vision? I couldn't see peripheral vision, but I could mm -hmm. see center in, in right before my eyes. How about hearing? How was your? Could you hear the noises? Uh, I could hear the volume very high, but I couldn't uh, understand what they were saying. There was the noise became garbled. I mean, the, the sound became garbled. Did you feel threatened at that point? Uh, yes. Did you have your knife in your right hand? Yes. What did you do with your left hand? With Tell us what you did with your left hand. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. With, so with, with my left hand, I uh, pushed her away from my face. Can you show us what you did with your left hand? Why'd you do that? She was very close to my face. She was in my personal space. She had been, had been there for a while, and uh, I felt threatened. Were you, did you intend to harm her in some way? No. Did you try to harm her in some way? Absolutely not. Do you know where, if at all, you had contact with her body when you raised your left hand in that manner? No. Do you think you had contact with her? No. Okay. I want to take us out of that space now for a second, okay, Nick? Okay. Um, if I could have the screen again. Um, you, you were here in court when we talked about, um, when we watched the video of you speaking with Brandy Hart, is that right? Yes. And I think you told her about your health condition. Can you just tell the jury now, what was your health like on July 30th of 2022? It was very poor. Yeah. Um, had you, I think you mentioned to her again, had quadruple bypass surgery before? Yes, sir. And how, when did you have that? Uh, 2020, about the same month. So about August. Showing you here what's been marked as exhibit number 108. Can you tell us what those are pictures of, starting just on the, on the left? Yep, on the left it's me um, right after the surgery. Um, holding a uh, red heart uh, pillow against my surgery. What was the purpose that you knew for that red heart pillow? That was to uh, protect my, uh, my uh, uh, surgery from hits, bumps. Was that something that the hospital provided? It looks like there's like almost a picture of heart and lungs on there. It is. Uh, the, the, the hospital provided that. And then the picture in the middle, what is that? My first walk, um, my new life. Did it take you some time to recover and uh, be as active and mobile as you were before? Oh, yeah. Do you think you ever reach the same level of mobility and fitness that you were prior to the quadruple bypass? Never. Uh, what's the picture of you on the right there? You can tell us. My baby. Okay. Gotta have, if, you, hey, if you get the dog in there, you get some points. You know how social media is. Get a picture of the dog. You're, you at least get a couple points for that. Um, is that a dog? Yeah. Is Got that dog important to you? Look, look, look. In my angel. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the cushions helping you to enjoy time with her, but still keeping your chest safe. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, it, it did look to me like he was surrounded too. You've had other surgeries in the past, is that right? Yes. Did you have a hernia surgery? Two hernia surgeries. Have you had back surgery? Yes. And again, in general, would you consider your fitness, on, if you were going to put it on a scale for July 30th, what would you consider your overall health and fitness on July 30th of 2022? with my weight and very poor. I want to ask you now about moving on to the Apple River on July 30th, okay? Okay. On that, this, plan, this was a planned trip, is that right? Yes. Did you get a call from your friend Ernesto sometime before that trip? Yes, sir. What was that call about? 
he wanted to remind me to bring uh, my knife to cut string uh, when, when we tie the, the tubes together. Okay, when you say, do you have a pocket knife? Yes. Okay, can you tell us about that pocket knife? I owned it for about 10 years. I have it a lot on me. I uh, use it as a, basically a dual tool. Uh, I call it my uh, Swiss Army knife, uh, basically because it, I use it as a screwdriver. I cut insulation when I do electrical work. I, I, do it, I, I use it pretty much everywhere. Okay. I'm an engineer, my tool. Is it um, something that you've carried on your person I don't want to say all the time, but somewhat routinely? Yeah, when I knew I was going to work on something or need it for something, yes. Okay. Now I want to skip ahead again now to, to the river, okay? At some point, did Ariel lose his phone? Yes, he did. Did you go to look for that phone? I volunteered to go look for it. When you went to go look for that phone, did you, what were you wearing? Before that? Nope, right when you, when you oh. left your group to go look for that phone, what were you wearing? So I took my goggles, my snorkel, and my swimming trunks. Did you have anything on your feet? Yes, I had, on my feet, I had a pair of really, really torn up uh, uh, sandals. Okay. Let's, let's rewatch. I can't play the whole thing. I did post it on Discord, though. If you want to watch the whole thing, it's on Discord public chat, but. Should we watch this again? Even even though this is not the whole context, but this is the most of the video that we get, I guess. What is he on? Whoa! 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 What is he on? Whoa! Whoa! I didn't even say anything, so they're saying, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? I feel like there's just got to be more than this before the video. The initial part of this does look bad on him. What is he on? But you know there's more before this. It, it, there's no way this just starts with he's walking towards them and they're just like, oh, what is he on? There, there had to be more before this. But he walks up. They're egging him. He does touch the floater, the floaty, the tube, which I don't think he should have did. And then the little scoop, the mask drops in. And it does look like like he's looking for something in the water at that point. He's on camera. Guys, let's go. <laughs> he's on 4K. <laughs> Yo, the new iPhone got that good. He's on 4K, the new iPhone. What do you say? I wonder what he grabbed from the tube right there. There's, oh, like a can. Is that a beer? You guys can see that? Is that a Coors, Coors beer, I guess, or something? I don't know what that is. Can of beer, maybe. And he's screaming for the culture, for the culture. Are they saying something about the phone too? Let's see. Doesn't matter. Who is that? Who the 
hell is this? Go, it doesn't matter. Go, 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 Put on camera, did I? Some yes, kid. What the hell is this guy's problem, bro? We try to have fun. He's gonna call you. 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 Yeah, maybe he should have walked away. Or the kid should have walked away. I can't imagine just being surrounded by that many people, like, screaming. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I don't know. There's things that everybody could have done differently. And then I can't play the rest, I guess. <coughs> I approach, Judge. Yes. Showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 113. Is this a packet of nine photos of your sandals? Yes. You've seen those? Yes. Does that accurately show the condition of the sandals that you had? Yes. Can you just move for the admission of Exhibit 113? Any objection? I don't think I've seen them, Judge, if I can take a look at Yes. Oh, pardon me. Never mind, Mr. Anderson. All right, 113 is received. Uh, these weren't taken by you, were they? <laughs> Pictures, no. no. These were taken by the Sheriff's Department, correct? Yes. Uh, permission to publish, Judge? Yes. Can I, just because we're going to go through the PowerPoint, can I pass Yeah, just them? pass them to the jury. Can you use your words? I know we have a picture that better does it, but just briefly describe the condition of those sandals. Horrible. Okay. They, they, were, they were just... Coming apart, they, they, I couldn't walk on them unless I tried to mend them. Okay. Um, As you can see, I used string, leftover string to mend them. When you left wearing those sandals in your shorts, um, did you have your pocket knife with you? Yes. Where was it? In my right pocket, okay. clipped to my... Did shirt. you have that there pretty much all day? Yes. Um, you were here when we watched the video of your interview with Brandy Hart, is that right? Yes. Um, when you spoke with Brandy Hart, were you truthful to her about the knife? No. I lied about the knife. Was that your knife? Yes, it is. It did, was. Did you bring it with you uh, when you went to go uh, look for the phone? Yes, I did. When you went to go look for the phone, did you have any intent to harm anybody? No. Why'd you go leave your group? Go look for the phone. Okay. At some point, did you have some contact with uh, a group of uh, teenagers? Yes. Um, and you were here in court when we uh, saw the nine second video, is that right? Yes. I want to show you just a, a couple of slides from that, if I could. Do you, uh, do you see those slides up there? Yes. Are those from that video? Yes. What are you uh, doing in those three slides in general? I was scanning the water looking for the phone. Okay. And are you in that position, are you walking upriver or downriver? Upriver, away from, the, from that group of uh, boys. Did you hear them say some things to you? Yes. Prior to your walking upriver and them, uh, did you hear those words that I have written on that slide? Yes. Prior to your hearing those words when you were walking upriver, had you had verbal contact with that group? I think they, so. They asked me uh, what I was looking for, and I told them I'm, I'm uh, looking for a phone, a lost phone. Did you ever tell them that you were looking for little girls? No. Were you looking for little girls? Absolutely not. It's pathetic. Um, when you, at the end of this, when you, you watch the video, at the end of the video, where I'm not going to play it, but do you remember what you did right there at the end? 
at the end, I was walking away. Okay. Did you eventually turn around and face in the direction of the group that was yelling at you and calling you a raper? Yes. When you... Yes. Hmm. That's foul. Put, putting it on anybody is, is foul. Just like with no kind of factual evidence or anything. I think they were doing that to trigger him. And at the end, I was walking away. Okay. Did you eventually turn around and face in the direction of the group that was yelling at you and calling you a raper? Yes. When you. Yes. Okay. Let's see when they come back. I was walking away. At some point, did you ever become in a position where you uh, were looking at that group of teenagers that had yelled at you? Yes. Um, what did you see when you were looking at that group of teenagers after the end of this video? I uh, saw them. I saw one of them holding a, a phone in a bag, um, and I believed it was what I was looking for. So I turned around and. I started approaching them. Oh. Why did you approach them? I wanted to get a closer look at the phone to see if it was the one that, I was, uh, that belonged to IEL. Um, did you eventually get near them? Yes. I, uh, I, I started walking, then I uh, rushed the pace, uh, stumbled and fell on my knees, held on to their tube. All right, so let's see that, because I'm curious about that. I, I, I've been in situations, listen, I've been in situations where it's like something went missing and there's people around. I don't want to accuse them, but maybe I'll walk up and approach just to see what's around. So he's saying, let's see, he's saying he walked up and, and stumbled. That's why, okay, let's see. Well, let's take a look at this again. <laughs> Maybe he stumbled. I don't know why he was running up, but maybe, maybe, maybe he stumbled. Let's look at that again. Hold on. What? What's not playing? What is he on? Whoa! 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 Kind of tough. He, he puts it in his mouth, though, too, though. Like, he puts the goggles in his mouth. That's a hard one for me. I'm not sure. Um, at which point, I lost my, my goggle and snorkel kit in the water. Did you saw in the video, or excuse me, you saw during your interview with Brandy Hart that you said things different than what you just said now about what happened to your snorkel and goggles. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, yes. Is your memory sometimes different than what you see in the video? Yes. Okay. Was your memory, in your memory, what happened to your goggles? In my memory, the goggles got um knocked away knocked away objection yeah leading. so I'll, got I'll, I'll, one second. when there's an objection just wait on your answer uh it is leading sustained next question please that's, that's stricken. it's a leading question let's move on um <clears throat> is your memory perfect never um now that you've watched the video do you realize that you were wrong about that Yes. Um, what happened to your goggles? My goggles uh, f uh, fell in the water. When they fell in the water, what did you do? I started looking for them, searching right where they fell. 
um, if I, oops, it's on already. Showing you here uh, some slides, 220, 225, and 279. Can you tell us what you're doing? I'm searching for the, the goggle kit. And where are you in relation to the six teenagers' tubes? Are you on the side? Are you upriver? Are you downriver? Are you in some other position? I'm upriver. So, um, yeah. I'm going to then show you another group of slides, 575. I'm still confused as to why they don't just play the video. This is ridiculous, but okay. I have 600 and 625. What does that show you doing? All right, so what I did from that point, I went around the, the inner tubes to the other side, and I continued looking for the goggle and snorkel set. Why did you walk around from the one side to get to the other? And I, I do agree with this part. This was after, like, he went to the... It did look like he was looking for something, for sure. Side of the tubes. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I thought that the water current, current would, uh, would, would bring him over to the other side, and I was walking away from the boys at the same time. Okay. Um, during that time that you walked in that direction, did you have any physical contact with him? No. Were you confronting them? No. Um, didn't say a word. This next set of slides, um, what does this show you doing here? I'm walking away from, from the group. Still, Why? Go ahead. I'm, looking, I'm looking f still looking for my goggles at, the, at that time. When you were doing that, did you ever hear the kids say anything? They gave me a warning. What'd they say? You got 10 seconds. Uh, in response that really? to that, what did you do? I ignored them, and I actually continued doing what I was doing. Okay. I can show you the next set of... Let's see, uh... Oh, oh God! Me up! Me up! Hey, what are you talking about? Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> what? <laughs> Get away from us! What? Wait, what are you doing? What's going on with y'all homie? He's on camera! Guys, let's go! 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 let us were you in a position to see here 963, 1140, and 1155 what the teenagers were doing behind you? They were getting closer and closer to me. They were walking towards me. Were you in a position to see that? Was that behind you or had you turned around? Uh, well, I could hear their voices. I could hear that they were getting closer. At some point, uh, um, I may have turned my head and witnessed that. They're coming towards me. Showing you 1170, 1213, and 1284. What do you, what's happening here? I'm, uh, I have basically, I'm at an angle to them, but I could say I have my back at them. I'm still scanning the water, and they were right behind me. They got that close. They, within seconds, they were right behind me. At some point, did you see other people from another group? Yes. What uh, did you see? Um, I saw uh, what I seemed to me at the time, uh, adults coming over from the other side of the river. And when you saw um, adults coming over from the other side of the river, what did you do? I uh, walked towards them. I walked towards this. The first one was a... Uh, uh, it was Madison. When you walked towards Madison, where were the six teenage boys that had been yelling at you? They were following me. Okay. Were you in their path as you walked across the river towards Madison? No. Did they have a peer, as far as you know, did they have a clear path down the river if they wanted? More than plenty. Can I... Showing you this next group of photos, um, what did you, what's going on here? So, um, in this 
frame here, uh, the, left, uh, the, the first adult that came to me was Madison. She already had her finger pointing downriver and yelling at me and, and used some awkward words, ordering me to go down. We see your, it looks like you're doing something with your right hand. Do you remember? What are you doing with your right hand? Yep, I was uh, trying to explain to her what I'm looking for. When you tried to explain to her what you were looking for, did you get the impression she was <laughs> listening to you? No, her voice was too loud to... Actually, this is what Madison had as an impression. Okay. Hold did... on, hold on, wait a second. Sustained speculation. I'm asking about his impression, so I'll rephrase, I'll just... Did you get the impression that Madison Cohen was going to listen to your words? No. Why not? Because she was too loud. She never stopped to give me a chance to talk, and she kept pointing and ordering me to go down, down river. We've all heard the tape, but just to be, was she using polite language? Polite? No. Did you hear anyone saying anything behind you when you walked over to Madison Cohen? Yes, they're all calling me names. Showing you the next set of slides here, uh, 1776, 1840, and 1824. What are you doing uh, here in this set of slides? I'm turning my back uh, towards uh, Madison and the rest of the people. Why did you turn your back to Madison and the rest of the people? It felt to me like I couldn't have a conversation with her at that point. She was not listening, and I didn't want to I didn't want to interact any further. Had you at that point found your snorkel or goggles? No. Had you at that point found the phone? No. Did you hear anybody saying anything while you stood there with their back to them? Oh, yeah. What did you hear? They were still yelling, he's looking for uh, little girls. Were you looking for little girls? Absolutely not. When you heard them, did you consider that to be a lie? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. I asked, did you consider that to be a lie? I don't yes, think of course. Please. I don't think that's sustained. Legal. I sustain the objection. Please move on. When you heard that, did you consider it to be truthful or did you consider it to be untrue? <clears throat> untrue. And when you heard someone say an untruth about you, did that change how you were feeling? I uh, felt frustrated. I felt annoyed. They kept it, saying it over and over, so it annoyed me and frustrated me. And when you heard them say this untruth about you, did it appear to you as if the other group that had come over agreed with what these kid, the, the teenagers were yelling about you? Objection, leading, sustained. Did you think anybody in the other group was going to help you or listen to you when you were being called these names and accused of being a pedophile? Objection, leading, sustained. How did you feel? Well, I, I felt overwhelmed at that point. I felt still annoyed, frustrated. I felt like she wasn't listening. She was the adult that I thought I was going to, to reason with or get help from. She didn't, obviously didn't even attempt to reprimand the children from yelling. Showing you another slide here. Um, some 1838, 1846, and 1865. Is that you? Yes. What are you doing? Judge, can we approach? I yes. Have a oh, wow. Well. Okay. Skip forward. Let's continue. Showing you photos 1838, 1846, 1865. 
What are you doing in those? Uh, do you remember what you were doing? Yeah, I had my uh, back towards uh, the, the, the group of people. In the two photos there, which direction are you looking? I'm looking downriver. Okay. Are you looking at, uh, there's two different groups, if I recall, from exhibit 104. Is that right? Yes. One came from one side of the river and the other one's on the other side of the river. Correct. Which, where are you, in the photo on the upper left, are you looking at one particular group as opposed to another group? Yes, I'm looking at the, the boys group. And why are you looking at the boys group? Because they were yelling at me. And what were they yelling at you? They were yelling things that were not true and pointing mm -hmm. at me. When this, I want to, after that happened, showing you the next group of slides, 1875, 1883, and 1889, do you remember what Madison did, if anything, to you? Yeah. What she, did she do? <clears throat> she grabbed my right arm and she pulled me towards her and I lost my balance, so I moved towards her. Did you consider that in that circumstance to be a gentle or a gracious touch? No. That was not a gracious touch. No, not at all. Had she been using any gentle or gracious words with you? Not that, no, not that I remember. Um, in those photos, can we see the footwear that you were wearing on that day? Yep, those sandals that we saw earlier. Did you have confidence in your footing in that area with those sandals? Objection, leading. Sustained. How did you feel about your footing in that area? Very unstable. I uh, want to show you the next set of slides here. Uh, do you remember uh, what you say to Madison after she um, pulled on your right arm? Yeah, I told her not to touch me. And why did you tell her that? Because she pulled on me without my, mm. uh, my invitation. Um, were you, did you say that in any particular tone? No, not in a mean tone, but I, I made it. So, so she could hear me, don't touch me. Okay, why didn't you want her to touch you? I didn't give her permission to do so. Sure, but why did you not want to give her permission to do so? Because she was one mind, one track mind. She just wanted to get me away from that, point me down river and tell hmm. me to go there. What's your comfort level at this point? Um, <clears throat> on a scale from, uh, one to, to ten, comfort level is very low. Okay. Are you, um, if you had that same thing, a scale of like a fear scale, a one to ten fear scale, right? And yeah. so with ten being the most fearful you've ever been in your life and, and zero, let's call zero to ten, being the most safe you've ever felt. Mm -hmm. Where are you at here on a fear scale? In that particular, uh, yeah. about one. Okay. So you're more uncomfortable, but not necessarily afraid. Is that what I understand? Correct. At, um, where was your group in relation to you then? Was up river. And did you do anything in order uh, in relation to your group? Yep. What I, did you do? I, I turned to them and I, I, uh, called them. I was trying to call them to to come over and help me. Is are these slides? Does this twenty one twenty seven, twenty one forty, twenty one thirty one? What does that show you doing? I was waving at them and calling them to to come over. When you Sandra in the chat says they kicked the goggles out of his hands when he moved the tubes. He wanted them to move along because he was being harassed. When they approached him, he did not hit, kick, or touch them. Sam, watching the chat, what do you think? What do you think about you say this? Say you're recalling them. Did you do something physical or did you do something verbal or did you do both? Physical. Did <laughs> you make any verbal comments at that point? No. Why not? What do you think? It was what do you think very you loud. Chat? All around me was very loud. I don't think that anybody could have heard me at a hundred and some feet away. With everybody else yelling, did you think your yelling was going to de-escalate or escalate the situation? Uh, when everybody's uh, 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 raising their voice, I don't think having another raised voice would help the situation. Um, after you 
raised your hand to call for your friends. Did you see Madison Cohn doing anything? Oh yeah, she was uh, looking at towards her group and then she waved to them to come over to, uh, to her. Did, is that what we're seeing here in 2261, 2262, and 2263? What do you see? Yep, she's calling her, uh, her group over. Did you remember when she called her group over, did her group respond? Yes. Were, did they join that? Yes. Showing you now these slides, is that what you saw? Yes. Um, I think we saw, asked you questions before about Exhibit 104 with you with the blue dot and the other red dots. When you were, did, did eventually, did, were you standing there with other people around you? Yes. When you were standing there in that moment with the other people around you after you've called your friends once, was that other group, did they appear to be afraid to you? Afraid from me? Afraid. Did they appear? When you look at them, do they look like they're in fear? No, absolutely What does it look not. like to you? They're all laughing and enjoying themselves. At whose expense? At my expense. And... Wait, wait. Speculation as to what these other... Sustained. Speculation mm. as to what other people think. Next question. Okay. How did you feel in that moment when they were around you saying those things? Did you think they wanted you to join in their laughter? No. I... Did you want to join in their laughter? No, absolutely not. Where, not... Uh, if this fear scale is going, <laughs> is it staying at one or is it moving in a particular direction? It's creeping up. Um, showing you another set of slides here, 2328. 2311, 2382, uh, do you remember, uh, what do you remember about that? I remember uh, the young boys were, uh, were yelling, uh, pointing at me, uh, saying things that are not true. Um. Did you, were you able to see, like in this next slide, this 2429, 2440, 2401, were you able to see as you stood there what everybody was doing or were you able to scan and see that? For a brief second, yes. Okay. They were very close, they were really close to me. I could, I could see and hear them. How about your fear scale there? Where, where is it? Where is it? About two or three. Okay. I see in the one on the right there, you have your hand someplace. Can you tell me what you're doing with your right hand? Yes, I'm uh, uh, reaching for my pocket knife. Why? Because uh, at one point, my uh, fear was getting really high. Okay. And I, I, I was getting ready to pull it out. Okay. Um, do you remember, other than what you've talked about, Madison Cohen, pulling you, which we saw, do you remember anybody else touching, pushing, grabbing you in any way? Uh, the, the two ladies, yeah. yeah. Do you showing you here what's 2472, 2478, 2481, do you remember what's happening in those photos? Yes, yes. Um, this one, the lady on my right side, she, uh, she grabbed my, my arm and she was pushing against my, uh, my arm. And did that increase your level of comfort or increase your level of fear or something different? So it decreased my level, uh, the level of comfort and increased my, uh, my fear. Do you know, do you remember, at some point, do you take your knife out of your pocket? Yes, I, I do. Do you know when that is in relation to these slides? Do you have a memory exactly of when that is? Not exactly, but when they were pushing and... and poking at me, I remember I pulled it out then. Okay. Do you remember, did you have it out before you were punched or after you were punched? Before I was punched. Okay. Showing you another set of slides here. It looks like you're, do you remember doing something with your left hand? Yeah, at that moment I really needed my, my people to come over and, and help me. So I was uh, trying to get their attention. Um, one more slide here. Do you, um, what's happening here in this slide? All right. Uh, Madison is pushing on my left shoulder and 
basically yelling at me right in my face. And then on the next slide, we see something in your hand. Is that right? That's a knife. Um, Why did you take out your knife at that point? I was beginning to be afraid. And what was it about that moment where everybody is that made you so fearful that you took out your knife? I was surrounded. They, uh, they were yelling. They, were, they had just pushed me, um, well, the lady. They, they squeezed my arm. I mean, it seemed like they were not backing away. Um, previously, you turned around. Is that right? Yes. Did you feel comfortable turning around in this situation? No. Why not? They were too close to, to me. What happened the last time that you turned around? Nothing good. Oh. Um, Judge, this is a good place to break. Me as well be. All right, it's 12 noon. Let's break for lunch. Um, okay, the, so take a little break here. New- I'm curious what happens when the prosecution comes as well, though. Let's see. Wait, that's it? That was quick. And you are. Begun the morning on, and so I want to start from there again and then. I guess they trimmed it out. Good. Move forward from there. Does that make sense? Yes. When I had asked you before, you talked about how you felt, but since that time, you've told the jury that you had this fear scale. Okay? Mm-hmm. So at, I want to ask you about at this time, what we see here, what you've previously described the scene, right? Mm-hmm. How were you feeling on the fear scale? About the six, seven. Okay. And at some point, I think you told them before, but just so we can put it into the context here, did you do something in response to something that was done to you when you're standing there in this moment? Yes. Uh, after uh, um, I was pushed, and uh, both sides, I would say, you know, squeezed, I, um, I was afraid, so I pulled out my knife. Okay. Mm. Did you do something with your left hand at some point? Yes, I did. What did you do with your left hand? I pushed her away. I and when pushed you say Madison. You pushed away. Madison away. When you, was the purpose in that to have contact with her and to get her to back up? Yes. Did you have a purpose to cause her pain? No. Were you trying to hurt her? No. What were you trying to do? I was trying to push her away from my space. She was right in my space, my face. Could you, ba- why didn't you just back up? Couldn't back up at that moment. Okay. When you say you couldn't back up, did why not? Because you felt uncomfortable, or were you objection leading? Because I would have had. Wait, wait. There's an objection sustained on leading. Next question. Wasn't done with it. Were you uncomfortable, or was there a wall behind you, or was there some other reason? Why did you feel like you couldn't back up? I didn't feel uh, feel uh, safe turning my back on on those people. Okay. How about just did taking a step backwards? Well, I was standing my ground. I didn't move towards anybody. Okay. They were coming at me. When, they, when you raised your left hand and you did that, do you recall when you pushed her away having contact with her? I may have, yes. Okay. Do you remember in particular where, if at all, you touched her? No. Okay. Would it surprise you if you touched her? No. Was that, in fact, your purpose in pushing her away? Absolutely. Okay. It was in my space. I want to move forward here. At, and you can turn the slide off, I guess. At, after you did that, right, did you, did something happen to you? Yeah. Did people do something to you? Yeah. What uh, was done to you? Yeah, almost right away I got uh, punched. Okay. And, and fell in the water. Where did you get punched? On my face, on my side of the head. Now, you've had a chance to watch this video, correct? Yes. Have you had a chance to see these 4,800 slides? Yes. Prior to seeing that, did you remember everything? No. Have the video or the slides helped you to refresh your memory in some way? A lot. Have you remembered everything because you've seen that? Not everything, no. Do you remember some things different than what you see in the video? No. You don't remember any of the things different that you see in the video? Like you Mm. talked about the goggles. 
Yeah. Objection leading. Overruled. We're just trying to reorient the witness to a place where <clears throat> examination can continue. Are there some times when your memory is different from what the video is? Yes, of course. Okay. Now, this series that I want to show you is about things that were done to you, okay? Yes. Do you have a specific memory about everything that was done to you? No. Do you have a specific memory about everything that you did in response to what was done to you? No. Do you have a memory about how you felt in those moments? I would say yes, I do. Um, do you have a memory of what you believed in those moments based upon those feelings? Of course. So I want to show you the, the slide here. <laughs> And this is slide 2661, 2662, and 2681. That's fine. Wow. Do you remember how you felt when you fell back into the water? I was, uh, number one, I was stunned. Uh, that's why I, I uh, fell backwards. I was very afraid, of course. On this fear scale that you've talked about before, where are you on that scale from zero to 10? Right at the top, 10. Have you ever been at that 10 before in your life? Never been in a situation like this or a fight in my life. Have you ever been at a 10? Never. Um, when you did that, as we see on the right, what happened to your head? Oh, um, well, I... Uh, fell in the water, obviously that's a river, and uh, I hit my head on, uh, on river rock, and uh, my whole body went under, well, okay. my head went underwater. When you say your head went under, is that what it felt like? Yes. Did you feel water come over your face? Objection. Over my entire body, Hold on, yes. Hold on, what's the objection? Leading. Sustained. Where did you feel the water on your body? Over my face, my, my mouth. I felt like I was submerged in water at the moment. Did you try to get up? Yes. Why did you want to get up? Why didn't you just lay down there peacefully in the water? To drown? No, I wouldn't want to do that. I wanted to get up out of the water. At that moment when you're down in the water, had anybody like A.J. Martin come up to you and said, just lay there and rest? Uh, somebody came from behind, yes. I found out later who he was and okay. pushed me down and to keep me in the water. Ooh. Before that, when you tried to get up, do you remember feeling anything before that? Did you, you told the... Yeah. Uh, did you feel anything to any part of your head? Yes, of course. What did you feel? Felt uh, punched in the, in the head. Mm. Showing you the next slides. Is that 2701, 2705, 2706? What's happening to you there? I'm getting hit on, on the head. How many times at that point, is your memory of watching the video and your memory of experiencing this, have you been hit in the head now, but either by people or by the ground or by the water? Four times at least. Okay. At this point in time, where's your fear scale? A 10. When this happened to you, did you immediately get up or did you fall back in the water or did something else happen? I tried getting up, but I couldn't. Did you, at some point, did you feel something on your backside? There was somebody pushing me down. And when you felt that on your backside, did you feel anything else anywhere else? I got hit in the face, in the front of my head. And is that um, exhibit here? 2147, do you see that hand through the underarm there? Yes. Do you remember getting hit in the head there? Yes. Was that a gentle hit? No. When you're getting hit in the head here again, where are you at on the fear scale at that point? 10. Have you been able to get up out of the water? No. How many people do you know? How many people are attacking you? At the time, I didn't know, but I, I knew there were more than I could handle. Did it feel like it was? How many did, people did it feel like? Like 10. Okay. You've seen the video and you responded at some point, is that right? Yes. 
and you used your knife in response? Yes. Why do you use your knife? I feared for my life. Did you think you could get out of there without using your knife? I couldn't even get up. They are pushing me down. No, so the answer is no. In that time when you're down on the ground, did you think there was a way for you to escape? No. Did you feel like you could just crawl away or run away or walk away or do anything else to escape? Not in that position. The next day after this, July 31st, were you in the, uh, did you feel, how did your body feel the next day? I hurt everywhere. My head hurt, my throat hurt, uh, obviously my back hurt. I hurt everywhere. You said your throat hurt. Is that something you remembered that day before when you were speaking with Brandy Hart? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yes. Did you mention it to Brandy Hart? I don't remember. Okay. Have, did, did you see anything, when you felt the pain about your throat, did you see anything that refreshed your memory about what caused that pain to your throat? After watching the video, yes. Okay. What happened? I got hit in the, in the throat. Do you remember that heart. now? Yes. If I can. Showing you the slides 2993, 2994, and 2997. Is that you? Yes. What's happening to you there? Somebody is going for my throat, squeezing my throat. Do you remember how that felt? I felt pain. I couldn't breathe. I'm scared, afraid. And showing you the next set of slides here 2998, 99, and 3000. What did you think was going to happen to you in that moment? The whole time I, I, I felt like I was going to die, so he, I, basically I feared for my life. And in response to that, here's slide 3000, did you do something in response to that? I reached out and, uh, and stabbed him. Mm. Yeah. When you used your knife, and again, this is open-ended. You can ask it any way you want. Did you, were you trying to kill somebody? Absolutely not. Um, what were you trying to do? I was just trying to defend myself. After this was, again, we've seen the video, you talk to investigator Hart. So I want to ask you a little bit about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you independently, well, let me say, you've watched the video here in court, correct? Yes. And you watched the video prior to that. We've watched it together, right? Yes. Does watching that video refresh your memory? Do you have an independent memory of that conversation with investigator Hart? No. Do you remember what it is you said other than seeing things on the video? Other than uh, I lied about the knife, uh, that's what I remember, you know, after, yeah, I lied about the knife. Do you remember actually saying that in that moment, or you just remember seeing that and that's what you remember seeing? I remember seeing it in the video. Okay. Do you remember how you were feeling during that time at all? Do you have any memory about that? Not much. Okay. Just one other thing out of the timeline here. Since that time, have you, we've heard testimony, you have a twin brother. Yes. What? Is he here in the courtroom? Yes. What? Twin it's brother. Relevance, Your Honor. He did it. He's the killer. You may continue. What? Just briefly, because I want to ask you about conversations that you may have had with your twin brother. Just briefly. How do you feel about your twin brother? I love him. Objection. That's irrelevant, Your Honor. What? It, during this time, have you had conversations with your twin brother? Yes. Do you consider there to be anybody that you're really, maybe your wife, anybody you're closer to than your twin brother? No. The, you and your twin brother, when you speak, what language do you speak in? Romanian. Why do you speak well, in Romanian with your twin brother? It's the easiest way to find words to describe what we're thinking. Okay, is that where you grew up? That's the first language. Um, 
Are there times when you've spoke with your yeah. brother that you've talked about this, what happened to you on the river? Yes. Is your memory about what you did or what was done to you, is it any better when you talk to your brother than it is when you talk about it other times? No. Are you always getting it right? No. How about your feelings, your mm -hmm. memory about your feelings? Mm -hmm. Do you get those right? Yes, okay. but almost all the time. I, the feeling is imprinted in my, my, my heart, my soul, my mind. Mm. What do you guys think? Let me, just for a moment, I'll bring us back to the river on July 30th, okay? Mm -hmm. At some, uh, I think you'd said on the video and maybe you testified that people attacked you, is that right? Correct. At some point, did people stop attacking you? No. At some point, did people stop attacking you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. When people stopped attacking you, what did you do? I walk away. Okay. Why didn't you stay? Oh, God. Uh, I, I walked away towards my group where it was safe. I was afraid of the people that I just had contact with. When you're walking away, where, and you've talked about this fear scale. Where are you on the fear scale? Does it just go down right to zero? Does it stay at 10? Does something else happen? No, as soon as I saw the, the people I trusted, my fear uh, level started creeping down. When you say creeping down, when you're walking back, can you give us a, a, a where are you on that scale? As I was getting closer to my group, the fear factor is mm -hmm. going lower and lower. But when you first start walking back, what's the number value? About eight. When you get back to the tubes, what's the number level? About four, okay. five. At, I think we didn't talk about it. We've talked a little bit about your body response during this mm -hmm. brief time. When you start walking back, how's your body responding to you? I had cramps. I uh, felt like I lost, I, I had diarrhea, so I felt like I lost my bowel. Was that, Which I did. When, was that when you were walking back or was that when you were in that 10 seconds <laughs> of things happening to you and you responding? I was when, when the, the action was going on in the 10 second frame. You got diarrhea? Yes. What? Um, diarrhea? When you were walking back, yeah. uh, what else is your body? What are you feeling with your body? Well, heartbeat is getting uh, when I'm walking back. The heartbeat. So somebody in the chat said, "Gross, I'm eating." News flash: I'm a, <laughs> I gotta eat. I'm human. I did a previous stream that was like three hours long. I got a daughter, a girlfriend, two dogs. Yeah, I I gotta eat at some point. I'm sorry if that offends you. Well, you're probably watching me while laying on your couch, eating your dinner, a slob. Complain about me eating. Yeah. I'm sorry. I got to eat this. I, I got to I gotta survive. I got to eat this shit. Yeah. <laughs> it was very, very high. Now it's going down a little bit. Breathing. You know, that's what I remember. I remember I, I was super, super stressed. How about your head? As you're going back, is your head clear? Is your head in a different state? How can you describe, no. like, what's going when you're on? All your day. Head? My head was in a... Fog, it was like thick fog. I, I couldn't think, I couldn't realize what, what, what I've been through. Were you trying to make sense of it? I was trying, but there was no sense to be made. I was completely confused and in a fog. And when you walked away, you had the knife in your hand, is that right? Yep. When you got to your group, did you still have the knife? No. What happened to the to the knife? Uh, I, on the way back, I tossed it on the, on the bank. And you just made with your right hand kind of an underhand motion yeah. with your right hand from, you know, at your side, raising up to maybe level with you. Is that fair representation of what you were describing? Correct. Why did you toss the knife? Hmm, good question. You know, I was afraid. Felt like I had to throw it away. You little sus, throwing the knife away. What sus. were you afraid of at that point? 
I was overwhelmed with with just fear, you know, residual feel, fear, and I didn't want to have anything to do with that. Okay. We've heard testimony that eventually you get back to the tubes. Does that happen? Yeah. Do you, where's your memory about that? Right now as you sit here, because we don't have a video about that, we don't have photos of that, is there, what's your memory like about that? It's barely remember anything. Okay. Do you remember talking to people? I remember people trying to talk to me, but I don't know, I don't remember what I said. Okay. You've heard some testimony about things that you might have said. Are you denying you said any of those things? No. Do you know what you said? After watching the video, yes. Oh, oh. The video isn't of, of, I'm confused. Would you, the tubes, there's no video of you at the tubes. When you say... Oh, uh, after, well, after... Were you talking about Brandy Hart's statement? Yes, yes. Okay. About what you said to the people at the tubes. Do you have any memory of that? No. no. Okay. When you're sitting there at the tubes, how are you feeling in your head? You talked about this fog, right? If you could put that on a scale, where is that? I still couldn't, my, my head was in a thick cloud. I couldn't understand what, what just happened. Still trying to process everything. I was overwhelmed. Did you think at any point you were just casual about what had happened? No. Did this feel casual to you in any way? No. At some point, uh, you saw the video here. You had contact with the police, is that right? Yes. Um, you uh, had sat in the back of a squad car of the Sheriff Knutson, is that right? Yes. Do you remember much of anything about that? No. Do you remember, you've seen some of the videos today. Can you tell us, what do you remember? Nothing. Okay. Nothing at all? How about a feeling? Do you remember a feeling at all? Yeah, I was very, Still very afraid. Okay. When you say very afraid, what were you afraid of at that point? Well, I've just seen... Ricky, come I've on. been through a horror situation, but uh, in their presence, I wasn't that afraid, but I was stunned. I don't remember much about it. Do you remember watching the video here in court when the police were talking about a guy with the bat? Oh, yeah. Do you remember anything about that? Uh, a little bit. Do you remember how, you, how that made you feel? Oh, yeah. I, I, I felt very afraid of him. Very afraid. We watched the video of you with um, Sheriff Knutz, and that was about 23 seconds long. Do you remember that? Yeah. Have you watched a longer portion of that video with your attorneys? I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember saying more things to Sheriff Knutson after that? I don't remember. Okay, that's fine. Um, we saw a video here about your uh, being arrested and told that you were arrested for homicide. Did you remember that? After watching the video, memory came back, but I don't remember that. Okay. That's really when, you, when you're talking with either, at some point you go and you meet with Investigator Hart, is that right? Yeah. When they were talking about homicides and injuries, can you tell me what you were, what's your mindset? Did that make sense to you? Did you understand that? No, I, 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 I couldn't make any sense of it, anything that she was telling me. I, I just couldn't make sense of it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Crystal. Plus, appreciate I the super chat. Don't remember the- Crystal, thank you for the five, says enjoy your meal, Mel. Up all as well with you, the pups and the girlfriend. Thank you. Also, um, earlier, Mojo Ryzen, uh, thank you for the five, says, I think the man was maybe confused at first, thinking maybe friendly people. I don't know. I'm very sad this happened. And uh, Mustard Mama, again, thank you for the 20 memberships. Yeah, I I'm just, I'm not on the news. I'm not a newscaster. I'm here in my, my living room, chilling. <laughs> Giving my opinion, we have a nice community, and oh my god, and sometimes yeah, I gotta eat. The 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 meeting with her, 
Okay. Right. Because if I don't eat, I get nasty. Like the Snickers thing, I, I get really nasty and aggy. You want me to eat. The co-workers that I used to have on my previous jobs, when I didn't, they knew it when I didn't have lunch. Oh, you want me to have something to eat. Trust me. You don't want me to be here just like pretending I don't have bowel movements and I don't need to use the restroom. I'm just going to stand here the whole time. You want me to have a bite. Now as you sit here, you're like, <laughs> I don't remember that. Right. The feelings. Now, some of the times that you talk with Brandy Hart, you talk about what you saw happening or heard happening or what you did. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. Do you I, get all of that right? No. Your feelings. When you were talking about your feelings about, and how you believed feelings. in your fear. Yeah. I, I, I feared for my life. That's one thing I can't deny. I, I, that's embedded in my head forever. I feared AJ. for my life. I know that. I have nightmares about it. You, you've talked to, or yeah, tell us about those nightmares. I have them every night. What, is, what happens in those nightmares? Objection, Your Honor. This point is irrelevant. It's, it's, his nightmares are irrelevant. The fact that he had them, maybe, but not the content. Oh, oh sure. Okay. No. Can I approach? Yes. yes. <laughs> Your nightmares don't matter. I want to hear what the what the prosecution is going to bring. Okay. Forward. Come oh my God. box of okay. You've had nightmares. Yes. And the nightmares have been about what happened to you on the Apple River when you were attacked. Correct. And the nightmares are essentially a replaying of what it is that happened. Agreed? Correct. And when you have those nightmares, your body responds. Yes. Oh, my God, again? All right. All right, all right. Well, at least we, we can skip by this. Not a big deal. I want to just make sure we check a couple of legal boxes, okay? Mm -hmm. When you used the knife, did you believe you were under attack? Yes. Why? Because they, at that point, they've, they've already been pushing and tugging and... Mm. When you something. used the knife, had they done anything more than pushing or tugging? Did you... They punched me, they, they, they pushed me down, they, they, they threw me in the water, I hit my head, yes. So, when you decided to use your knife, were you using it to prevent an attack or stop the attack that was happening? To defend myself. Um, did you believe you needed to use that knife? Absolutely. In that moment in time, again, as you've described it, they've pushed you down into the water, and you've been punched. That's the moment of time I want to ask you about, OK? Yeah. In that moment of time, when you were down in the water, did you believe you could escape? No. What do you believe would have happened to you had you not used your knife? I would have died. I believe wow. I would have been killed that day. Why or do at you? At that specific time. Why do you use your knife? To defend myself. Those are the only questions I have, Judge. Okay. Let's do the prosecution. Time. What do they got? I'm very curious. Let's see. I can approach, Judge. Uh, Again? And like showing like the mark is exhibit 12A. You recognize that? Yes. That's the group photo of you, you folks from the beginning of the river? Yep. In fact, you're holding a beer? Correct. Hmm. Looks like everybody in your group has some sort of alcoholic beverage. Looks like it. You see numerous people in your group with these phone cases around their necks? Yeah. And as you're going down the river, you saw lots of people with phone cases around their necks, right? Mm -hmm. All day long? Yeah. In fact, um, River's Edge sells or rents out those phone cases, right? I don't know that. Did people in your group rent or buy phone cases from the tube rental? I have no idea. All right. <clears throat> testified that you were told to bring the knife before you left your home, right? Correct. And the reason for bringing your knife on the river was to cut 
strings or ropes for the tubes, right? Correct. And that was, that was the reason you brought it? Correct. In fact, you told the police that after your tubes were tied together, you thought you put your knife back in the car. Correct? Right? Correct. But in fact, it was in your pocket? Yes. Was it in your pocket the whole day? No. All right. Well, we're going to get to that. Hmm. Once the tubes are tied together with the rope, and you said that you thought that you put it back in your car, you don't have a reason to have the knife anymore, right? It accomplished its purpose, right? I didn't know that at the time. All right. Did you tell the cops that the police that you didn't think you were going to need it and that's why you thought you put it in the car? I may have. All right. Uh, were you present when uh, Steve Kaufman, who owns River's Edge, testified first day of the trial? Yes. And you heard him say that they, they sell pre-cut cords for a dollar, right? Right. All right. And then, did you see in the picture, uh, when you got on the river, you were wearing that long sleeve camel shirt, right? Mm hmm a hat and sunglasses? Correct. All right. Ariel's phone was in one of those, those cases, right? Sure, yeah, yeah, I can see it. All right, and is it your understanding that those cases are float cases? That's what I was told. All right, and you told, in fact, you told Lieutenant Hart that it was in a float case, right? Correct. Once the phone disappeared, there was conversation amongst the folks in your group about whether it was even worth it to go look for it, right? That's what I learned. And in fact, you were told that they didn't care about the lost phone because they had insurance to cover it, right? That's what I learned here, but I don't remember that as a conversation. Nobody asked you to go look for the phone, right? Correct. You chose to do that on your own. I volunteered. And in fact, members of your group were a little annoyed that you were stopping again so, so quickly after having been at the hideaway where you'd stopped for lunch. Objection, speculation. Sustained. Did you hear anybody in your group say, why are we stopping again? I didn't stop the group. The group stopped when you decided to go off on your own to look for this phone, Objection, right? speculation. Overall. Right? They already stopped. I got off the tube to look for the, so I didn't stop them. In any event, you're the one who insisted on looking for it. Nobody asked you to do that, right? Objection, answer, answer. Sustained. Answer the shoot. And enough. when you left to go look for the phone, you had your goggles and your snorkel, right? You knew that the phone was in a float bag, at least that's what you told police afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. So the bag, the phone, and the float bag would have been floating, right? Supposedly, yeah. All right, and so you wouldn't need a snorkel and goggles to find a, a phone flo uh, floating on top of the water, right? I wasn't sure if it was actually floating or not, and never tested it. All right, well, you would agree that a phone has some weight to it? Yes. And if it wasn't a float bag, it would sink to the bottom, right? Yes. Where it was dropped. Correct. Well, or... You remember, it's a river, so current. it could have flown down. The river has current, right? Right. So you have if I can approach, I'm going to draw something here. Yes. Now, you remember when you met with Lieutenant Hart, you drew a diagram of the river. <laughs> All right, and this is your group up here at the sandbar, right? Mm -hmm. This is the boys' group down here. I'll put initials IS for Isaac Schumann, right? Correct. And this is what you, this is the diagram that you wrote, mm -hmm. <coughs> drew for uh, Lieutenant Hart. The phone was lost over here, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of looking downstream for it where the current was going, you went this way, across the current. No. To look for the phone. You made contact with Isaac Schumann's group on the other side of the river. But that's, that's, that's not where I started looking for it, straight across the river. That's where you ended up making contact with I them. ended up there, but I didn't start there. All right. The phone would not have floated across the current, right? 
Well, I don't know where he lost it. That's where we pulled over. He could have lost it uh, minutes before we even uh, anchored. So when you testified a minute ago that the form was lost, where your group was labeled M, mm -hmm. now you're changing that story? In that vicinity. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, members of the jury, what the attorneys say is not evidence. Rely on the witness's testimony. Next question, please. In any of the event, is your testimony that you had reason to go over to the south side of the river where Isaac Schumann's group was? To look for a phone. That's your story? I had reason to search in that area. I didn't know where that phone fell in the water. I don't think even Ariel knew where he lost it. We didn't drop the phone when we anchored. We dropped the, he dropped the phone before we got there. Fair to say that at that point in the river, the river is 150 feet wide? Yep. And Isaac Schumann's group was on the south side of the river? Correct. Your group's on the north side of the river? 100 feet. Rather than searching the north side, you went to the south side of the river. Is that fair to say? I already looked in the in that area. That's not what I'm asking. You <laughs> went over to the south side of the river, right? Question asked and answered. Overruled. You can answer the question. You did, right? What was that question again? You went over to the south side of the river to supposedly look for this phone, right? I ended up there at that point, yes. And you chose to go over there and look for it, where these boys were. Overruled. You can answer the question. Oh. You chose to go over to where these boys were to look for, supposedly look for this phone, right? I chose to look in that area, yes. There was other areas of the river where there was, these boys weren't located that you could have searched until they floated past. past. Right? A million other spots. Sure. But you chose to go to that spot. I didn't even notice those boys there at the time when I was searching. You were present in court when Eric Williams, who was a member of your group, testified, right? Right. You heard him testify? Yes. And you were here when he testified that he had some concerns about you going over to snorkel by this group, Isaac's group? I heard him. And one of his concerns is that he thought that they would think you were a predator, Objection right? Irrelevant. Sustained. He testified that you didn't have your knife in your pocket the whole time, right? Correct. When you decided to go snorkel over by Isaac Schumann's group, you had the knife in your pocket. Yes. Did you go back to your group and get it? No, I had the knife. I testified I did not have the knife in my pocket the whole time. When we pulled over there, I fixed my shoes. Then I left it in my pocket. All right, but somehow, so when you get ready to snorkel, yes. you've got, you've taken off your shirt, right? Yes. Your hat. Yes. Your sunglasses. Correct. You left the knife in your pocket. I forgot it in my pocket. Well, on the video, we can see you touching your knife, right? You knew it was in your pocket. Well, when you walk, it starts, yeah, but... It has weight, right? right? Yeah. So you, you can't forget it's there because it's got weight. Correct? At some point, I forgot I had it in my pocket when, yeah, you when weren't you walk. Need, you were not going to need your knife to snorkel and look for a lost phone. Correct. Overruled. You weren't, you weren't going to need your knife for that for that task that you set out to do, right? I wouldn't even need anything. If I'm carrying some shit, it's not just because I'm going to do something specifically. It's for my uh, for my protection. Uh, if some shit goes down, I don't need to carry some shit for a designated specific task. And if it's not for that, then I'm doing something wrong. That's ridiculous. But you brought it with you anyhow. Then around spell. It happened to be in my pocket, yes. When she got over to where Isaac Schumann's group was, they made it readily apparent they did not want you over by them, correct? 
that's not true. They didn't call you names? Yes, but they, they asked me what I was looking for. And I thought they were polite people. I said, I'm looking for my uh, lost phone. They, they did not want you by them, and they told you that, right? At some point, yes. And that's the short wow. video. You turn around and you're walking away, right? Yes. But then, Juan Cockfield calls you a raper, right? Yes. And then you turn around. Yes. And you were angry. I was not angry. Oh, you were not angry that someone called you a raper? No. All right. You look at Juwan, who's filming you, right? Yeah. And for some reason, your testimony is that even though many people on the river have these phones and these float cases, you decided that was the phone and you needed to run up and check. Objection argumentative. Sustained. Your testimony earlier was you thought he had the phone, right? I thought he had the phone, yes. Right. I wanted to investigate. And you, instead of walking up and saying, hey, is that the phone I'm looking for? You ran up on these boys, didn't you? I ran up and stumbled and then I fell right by, by there, yes. That's my next question. You're claiming now that you stumbled. Yes. You've never said that before today, ever anybody any law enforcement or anybody else right but I have seen the videos now well we're gonna take a look at the video Ooh. Ooh. <coughs> look at the video and since you reviewed the video you know that before you ran up on them you were touching your knife in your pocket to make sure it was there, right? I don't remember that. Right, well, let's take a look. That's you with your right hand touching your pocket where your knife was clipped in, right? It appears so. <coughs> what is he on? Whoa! 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 Get away! So you're claiming today that where you reach down and grab at these boys' legs where their tubes are, that that was a stumble. Is that your story? Hmm. Was it a stumble or not? That's the question. I, I, I know I hit a stone, yes. But I, I, I grabbed onto their uh, uh, inner tubes. And you know where you grabbed onto their inner tube is where two of these boys had their legs draped over their inner tubes, right? I see that. And you made contact with their legs, didn't you? I don't remember that. Did you see it on the video? I see it on the video. I don't remember actually making contact. And as soon as you did that, these boys jumped out of their tubes to get away from you, right? You remember that? Yeah. And you held on to their tubes so that their tubes couldn't float away. For how long? Well, I'm asking you. You did? Yeah, it looks like for a brief one second. And you were searching through their tubes. <coughs> for what? You walked around their tubes. Rather than letting their tubes go so they could get back in their tubes and be on their way, you walked around their tubes. So after my goggles dropped in the water, I went around their tubes to go to the other side and look for, for, for my goggles. Let's talk about your goggles for a second because you told the police, specifically Lieutenant Hart, that these boys knocked your goggles off your face and that you were looking for your goggles at that point, right? I don't remember my uh, interview with her, correct. But you heard yourself say it in the interview. Yes, yes. And in fact, that nothing of the sort ever happened, right? So the, the interview with, with, uh, with uh, Brandy Hart was not accurate. What you said at the time is what you wanted the police to believe happened, right? That's what I remembered okay. at the time. 
And from the video, you can see that you actually put your goggles in your mouth so you would have two free hands to be able to grab onto these boys' tubes, right? Oh. Yes. So you were preparing for your stumble before oh, it actually oh, even happened? Shit. I wasn't prepared for anything. These boys were calling you names to go away, right? After you grabbed onto their tubes, touched their legs. I they, don't remember any of that stuff. All right, you but, don't remember them calling but, you, asking you what you were doing? Wait. Watching the videos, yes, but before, but unnatural remembering, no. Uh, do you remember as you're running up, they're saying, whoa, 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 what's he doing? I don't remember that. All right, but you've seen it on the video? Yes. And then once you've made contact with two of these boys' legs and grabbed onto their tubes, they started calling you pedophile, right? I don't remember when they started calling me. Pedophile. Do you remember them calling you a pedophile at all? Or do you just know that from watching the video? Correct. You testified that they were calling you names earlier, right? Right. And that upset you? It did not upset me. Okay. We've talked, your attorneys talked about your comfort scale and your fear scale. Let's talk about your anger scale, okay? Mm -hmm. At the time you were called a raper, what was your anger scale at? Maybe one. One out of 10? Yeah. And that was enough to get you to run up on these boys, grab onto them, stop their tubes at a one. Is that what you're saying? Objection, argument, and that's not what he said. I mean, I, I guess he's trying to pull him into something, but I, I don't know. If I was on the stand, I'd tell well, well, how would you like to be called a rapist? No, sir, that's not the question. No, no. How would you like to be called a rapist and a pedophile? No, sir. No, the, the street, no, you can't do that. No. Let's talk about you, motherfucker. I, I would turn that shit around on the, on the attorney. Well, tell me about your family and your kids or whatever. Let's find out your family history. How would you like to be called a rapist and a pedophile and see how you feel? Sir, no, no, you can't do that. Sustained. Let's do it. You don't like being humiliated, right? Nobody does. Your attorney has said that these boys... That's what I'm saying. I would turn around his ass. What's his name, too? The, the attorney's name and shit. I'll turn around his. We're humiliating you. Objection as to his... Making Sustained on the form. You're claiming that you were being taunted? Objection... Did not testify to that. State. Form. I couldn't do this shit because I, I would seriously, it would be a shit show. I, I turned it around on him. Well, what about you? You a rapist? Huh? You had testified earlier that your shoes, there was problems with your shoes, but as you can see from the portion of the video we played so far, that didn't, those shoes didn't prevent you from running up on these boys, right? Yes, they did. That was, if I had better shoes, you know, I could walk better, but I, I could still walk. If you had better could, shoes, you would have been able to run up on them faster? No, I mean, wow. I could walk better. I, no, he didn't do that shit to him. No. I wouldn't <laughs> stumble. I wouldn't have a hard time walking. All right, we're going to watch the video again, and I want you to, if you can, point out for everybody where you stumbled. Oh, Johnny Depp their ass. Yeah, i would be asking questions to the attorney. What is he on? Whoa! 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 Get away! Did you watch it? Yes. So the stumble, is that something you remember or something that you think you see in the video? Something I, I remembered. After you grabbed onto their tubes, stopped them, walked around their, their tubes, you took a few steps down river and stood in the path they were floating in, right? She has to form multiple. Overall, do you understand the question, Mr. Mew? Could you say it again? After you left their tubes that first time, you took a few steps downstream and stood in their path where they would need to float, where they were floating, right? For a few seconds, yes. You didn't walk off to the south shore, which was close at that point. 
right? I, I thought I walked farther, far away from them that they, I mean, I didn't even watch them anymore at that point. So I don't know where they were in, in uh, you know, at that point in time. But I was still looking for my goggles now. Scott is being true. Are you denying that you stood right in the path of their tubes? Uh, overruled. You can answer the question. At that moment in time, yes. Now, when you ran up on these boys and grabbed onto their tubes and made contact with their legs, you weren't saying anything at that point, right? No. You didn't say anything like, hey, I think that's my phone or Ariel's phone? I don't remember saying anything. Well, you've seen the video. Right. You just ran up and grabbed onto them, right? It appears that. Was saying nothing. We can go up to the screen. We're going to look at some more frames here. We're starting 22nd mark, I believe. You stood in front of their tubes, right? This is at the 23 second mark. For a brief uh, moment. All right, keep going. Stop. At that point, you had the entire river open to move in any direction, right? Right. And you chose to just walk a few steps directly downstream from where their tubes were, right? Correct. The boys were yelling at you at this point, right? You remember that? Yep. They were making a commotion, right? They were loud. Mm -hmm. And that attracted the attention of the folks in the Carlson group, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you've testified that uh, Maddie, Maddie Cohen walked over, right? Yep. You walked towards her? Right? Yes. And the water level at the spot that you had contact with Maddie was about ankle deep from the video? From the video, yes. And you told Lieutenant Hart you were standing in really shallow water, right? Yep. <clears throat> Maddie told you to leave the area, right? She didn't say, say it that way, but yes. She said, go, go, go. And? She, sw oh. she swore at you too, but she was telling you to go, right? Yeah. You didn't go. I was right. trying to communicate with her what I was doing in the river. You didn't leave, right? No, not down the river. Hold on. Oh. Irrelevant on a legal basis that you Overall, it's relevant. You did not leave, right? I at didn't the time go that in the direction. Up, no. When she came up and said, go, 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 you chose to stay, right? I wanted to talk. You didn't like that she was yelling at you, right? I only had like two or three seconds of, 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 of direct verbal or whatever. Yeah, and you, you, clearly didn't like, you clearly didn't like she was swearing at you, right? right? And what you told her was not that you were looking for a phone, but that these boys took your goggles, right? I don't remember what I told. Right. If it's on the video, did you say it? If it's I on the video, the video, yeah. You never mentioned you were looking video. for a phone. Play the video. I don't remember my conversation with her. In fact, after you told her that they took your goggles, you never said another word, right? After that? You're right. Of course I did. Um, talking about your anger scale, at the point where Maddie Cohen was yelling at you and pointing at you and swearing at you, where was your anger scale? Zero. One. And <coughs> even with your anger scale being only one, you started touching, fidgeting with the knife in your pocket, right? I don't remember that. Right. Let's take a look at the video. Play this shit. Let's see.
Yeah, I heard about the news about uh, Dylan Rivers. Uh, Round, sorry, Dylan Round's being found. <coughs> I covered it a few times, and I think there was somebody arrested for the uh, murder. That that whole story was a. Uh, uh, we're ready. It's, it's timestamp one thirty-five. That's you touching your knife in your pocket, right? Correct. And at this point, you've got your back to the two girls who are yelling at you, right? It, it, it's possible. So even though you were fearing for your life, you yeah, turned. Trend. That's not what you said at that time. Overall, let's get the question out. You turned your back on these folks, right? Where am I in that uh, uh, location as reference to the other people? I get to ask the questions at this point. Okay. All right. You're back at the, at the 135 mark that we just watched. You've mm -hmm. turned your back on these folks, right? Okay. Is that, is that true? Yes, you I see that. Yeah. Right? You're touching your knife, but you got your back to them, right? I see that in the picture. And so at that point, you wouldn't have turned your back on these folks if you had fear of them, right? Objection mischaracterizes his testimony. Overruled, overruled. You can answer the question. Yes. We'll play a Let's clip. Here. That next question, please. We're going to play a clip here, Judge. Go back. Mm. We're starting at 126. Just play it. We can have the screen. Stopping at 135. So in that clip, that's the point where you had waved at your friends, right? You had turned your back on the groups, the people that were in the area, and you're touching your knife, mm -hmm. right? And at that point, you called out to your friends because you were, you're, I think you had said, and maybe I'm wrong, that your fear scale was going up at that point. Is that not right? I see lots of people around me and I wanted somebody to be on my side. Right. Your, your, your fear scale was going up, so you tried to wave your buddies over, right? Creeping up, yeah. And as it's creeping up, you're fidgeting with your knife. I, it appears that way. At some point, And even though your fear level is creeping up at that point and you've called for help from your friends or at least waved for help, you turned your back, right? Yes. At one point, you turn your head and you stare at the group of 17-year-old boys, right? Do you remember doing that? I don't remember, but if I see a video put it into context, it would have been at the point when Maddie Cohen tried to turn you away from those boys. Do you remember doing that? Yes. And one second, right there. If we can get the frame up. We're at timestamp 116. That's the look that you gave to those boys, right? At that time, at 116? 
Yes. That's the look on your face. Yeah. That's an angry look. Mm. Not to me. I was annoyed, more than frustrated, but not angry. <clears throat> at the point where you, you looked at the boys with that expression on your face, whatever it was, you had the entire river in front of you open to walk to, right? Mm. That's true. Correct. And instead you chose to turn back around where Maddie Cohen was, right? I stood my ground. I basically stayed in the same location. Right. I didn't go towards anybody at that point. You, you didn't take a step away either, did you? No. And at that point then, that's when Riley Madison joins her and you've got Madison and Riley standing in front of you, right? I suppose that's the time, yeah. Two girls. Yeah. And these two girls standing in front of you touched your shoulders somewhat, right? Mm -hmm. You never said a yes? Yes. You never stumbled backwards or anything like that? It wasn't a somewhat, but... Well, let's take a look at the video. Check my email. I heard about Dylan Rounds. Thank you. I mean, I can't stop what I'm doing now, but I, I yeah, hurting this phone. Crazy. We're going to start a little bit earlier than the part I wanted to start at. It's at the 135 uh, mark again, if we can put this screen up. Take the screen down. Starting at 134. So at that point, you're touching your knife before Maddie and Riley are standing in front of you, right? It appears that way. Stop. You had said that your fear level was rising. Mm -hmm. You had waved to your friends. Oh, right? they show them smiling like a, they took a that still was shot. look on your face at the time. Oh, love. Mm -hmm. You're smiling. I'm confused. You're smiling. I'm confused. Oh, oh shit. You're not it. smiling? That's yeah. not a smile. Oh, oh. Yes, we, oh, let's move on, please. We're going to still frame. Okay. Can we get the screen back? <laughs> Stop. All right, so... You had been fidgeting with your knife multiple times. You've got Riley Madison in front of you. I believe her testimony was, she's a 115 pound woman. You got Maddie Cohen on your other side. This is when you choose to pull out your knife, right? Question has to form. Overruled. Hmm. You understand the question? What does her way have to do with uh, me? Sir, you don't get to ask the questions oh, at this point. Oh, you pulled out your knife oh, yeah. at this point with these two girls standing in front of you, right? Yes. And you held it down by your belt, belt line, right? Yes. And you open it up, right? Yes. And this is before you had been punched or anything like that. You had that knife ready with these two girls standing in front of you. Objection as to use of the term girls and women. Women, mm -hmm. pardon me. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And you didn't hold it up and say, hey, I have a knife. Right? To me, that would be a threat. Well, I'm not asking you that. You did not hold it up. No. And you didn't, in fact, you held it down by your side. Right? 
objection asked and answered. Overruled. Isn't that what you did? Yes. You didn't take a step back and brandish it and say, hey, back up, I have a knife. Right? Correct. You opened it down low, and then you held it down low by your side. Right. Correct. And as you're doing that, you're smiling. Hmm. Right? That's not a smile. Well, let's take a look I'm, at the I'm, video. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. And annoyed. And that's you holding your knife down by your belt line, right? Yes. When you pulled it out and opened it up, you held it with the blade facing up, right? I didn't pay attention, but in the video, yes. And it, it becomes important later when you are when you stab AJ because you didn't try to cut him down, you cut him up, right? Right? That was not my intent. Overruled. I believe the witness answered the question. You, you had the knife blade up and you're saying you didn't know that? I didn't pay attention. As you're holding it there, you've got your thumb on the bottom of the handle, right? Right? Yeah. Blade up. I see that. Blade's pointing at, looks like at Maddie Cohen, right? Yes. Nobody else. I'll strike that. Mm. After you opened that knife, would it be fair to say that your fear level went down a little bit because now you had your knife open? No. All right. But was your fear level going up at that point? I think you said that earlier. The, the whole situation is it was boiling up. So when you have your knife open, you take a couple steps step backwards to get away from the situation. I stood my ground. I stayed in place. You never backed up one step, did you? No. You had your knife out and you were prepared to use it. To defend myself. At that point, there's nothing to defend yourself from, right? I didn't know that. If I understand your testimony today, now you're acknowledging that you did do something to Maddie Cohen, which started off this fight, right? Objection, argumentative. Overruled. You can answer the question. Objection, please. Yes. <clears throat> They punched or anything else, right? I may have. You I, don't remember I, that? Well, I remember what I said, but I went over to push. She was in, right in my, my face, right in my space, yelling, and I could smell the alcohol in her breath. But you had been drinking too, so Ooh. it might have been your breath. Ooh. I didn't have vodka and all the other garbage. Ooh. Right, garbage. Is, today you testified that you did something physical to Madison Cohen before you were punched, right? Mm. Correct? I didn't, I don't know if I touched her or not. It's possible that I did. If your friend Sergio testified last week that he saw you push her and she went flying back a couple of steps, mm. that's what happened, right? Objection as to form sustained. Mm. Were you present when Sergio testified? Objection mm -hmm. as to form and relevance sustained. After you pushed Maddie Cohen, only one person ever punched you, right? From the video? Right. That's what I see, right? I don't remember what happened then at that time. I'm not asking you what you remember. Yeah. I'm asking what actually happened. I got punched. Objection, no foundation. Mm -hmm. 
sustain, rephrase the question, start. We saw in the video that only one person ever punched you, right? Yes. Objection. It's crossed. It's not on. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Lord Almighty. That you went down and you fell down in the water when you were punched, right? Yes. And you indicated, I think, that you were punched in your jaw, I think on your left side of your body? Yes. You testified that you fell back in the water and hit your head, right? Mm. Yes. You did not drop your knife, mm. right? Mm. You held on to it when you fell down in the water. Yes. Mm. When Dante Carlson hit you, he was holding a can of beer in one hand, right? Yes. He was fighting you with one hand. Yes. You never suffered any kind of bruising or cuts to your face from this incident, right? On the inside of my cheek? You cut the inside of your cheek? Yes. You, had, you never had any bruising on your jaw, right? I don't remember. I mean, I had a beard, I couldn't tell. You weren't bleeding from your face anywhere? No, not that I know. Um, let's play the video of him stabbing you. Oh. Once you're knocked down in the water, AJ Madison comes up to you and press, pushes on your back, right? Objection, no foundation. Sustained. We'll play the video. Hmm. You were pushed in the back by A.J. Madison, right? Objection, no foundation. Overruled. In response, you got up out of the water, right? Mm -hmm. You take your knife in your right hand with the blade up, right? Objection, the skin narration. Right? Overruled. That's what you did, right? Still in my hand, yes, that way. You, you jabbed it into his belly. About the same time he hit me in the throat. That's not what I'm asking. Yes. You jabbed it into his belly, right? Yes. Instead of pulling it out, you pulled up, right? Because I had so much time to think about it. You pulled up. I did not pull up. Okay, I look at the angle of my arm. We're at, we're stopped at timestamp 156. You see your knife? Yes. And how close it is to his jaw, his chin? Yes. That's because when you stabbed him, instead of pulling out, you went up, right? I was falling backwards with the knife in my arm, in my hand, and the angle of my arm was about the same. I, I, got, I just got hit in the throat. In this frame of the video, the knife's pointing straight up, right? Yes. You went in, pulled up, and it's, it's, by the time you got done up by his face, your knife's pointing straight up. Objection, ask, sorry. Overruled. You can answer the question. It's straight up. At that point, Tony Carlson came in to break up the fight. Objection, right? speculation. He doesn't know what Tony Carlson's doing. Overall, Overruled. You can ask the question, he can answer. I don't know what he was doing. You're, you know that he told Dante Carlson to back up, right? Objection, no foundation. Overruled. Do I know from video and from testimony? Yes. At the time? I didn't know. In After you stabbed A.J. Madison, you were pushed back into the water, right? Just sorry, it's A.J. Carlson. Pardon me. No, it's not, it's not. A.J. Martin. It's A.J. Madison, he, Car he's not part of the Carlson family. A.J. Martin. Martin. Thank you. Pardon me. After. You stabbed A.J. Martin, 
you were pushed back into the water, right? Yes. Nobody jumped on top of you. No. Nobody was kicking at you or punching you? No. You're just in the water by yourself, right? Apparently, yes. We're going to take a look at the video starting at 1. 155. That's you in the water, still holding your knife, right? Pardon me, this is before you, f you got up. At this point, you're standing there. There's nobody hitting you, nobody's punching you, nobody's kicking you, right? Objection, that's not the video show. He's not standing. Gentlemen, please come up. <coughs> Ended on my on my butt in, right. in, in, uh, in the river. But at that point, the fight didn't continue. People weren't punching on you, right? I, at that time, I couldn't tell what was going sure. on around me. That's at the point that Tony Carlson came over, was yelling at people to back up. Do you remember that? From the video. You don't, you don't have a memory of that in your head? He, he separated Dante from you, right? Mm -hmm. No foundation. Overruled. Right? If it's from my memory, I don't remember that. Tony Carlson never punched you, correct? Correct. He never kicked you, never pushed you. Objection. Overruled. No. And you turned around and you stabbed him twice. Right? Ricky. Stop. I couldn't see. I couldn't hear. I didn't know who was punching me, touching me, shoving me. Nothing. I was fearing for my life. You stabbed the guy who tried to break up the fight twice, right? Objection. Awesome. Overruled. That's what happened, right? That's what happened. And luckily for him, he was able to block your first stab, so you stabbed him again, right? I had milliseconds to think. Riley Madison, after you stabbed Tony Carlson, you turned around, you got up, you turned around, and you sliced Riley uh, Madison through the her left side of her body, right? Yes. She wasn't punching you or kicking you. She came at me, and she had her hands on me. At the time you stabbed her, she had your hands, her hands on you. Yes. This, this, this 115 pound woman attacked you while you're standing there holding a knife. She could have been 500 pounds. Oh. I don't know. I, you, I'm sorry, sir, but I, you, I... You've never told anyone ever that Riley Madison attacked you and that's why you stabbed her, right? No. You're saying it today for the first time. Mm -hmm. I don't remember this whole thing. After you stabbed Riley Madison, mm -hmm. Isaac Schumann tries to push you. Right? And he lands his hands on my throat, yes. Yeah. But his hands originally weren't anywhere near your throat. They were on your shoulder and your chest, right? I didn't take measurements, or, but yeah, from the, from the picture, yes. And as soon as he touches you, you stab up into his heart with your knife, right? Objection, no foundation. Overruled. Over he went for my throat and I defended myself. Yes. Are you saying, let's, we're gonna look at the video. We're gonna start at 202 and for anybody who doesn't wanna watch, you might wanna avert your eyes. Ricky, you're not coming back. 
come. You're done. We're at 2.05, the, the timestamp on the video. That's Isaac Schumann, right? Right? Right. His right hand on your chest, right? Right. They're not on your throat. In that particular uh, frame? Correct. And your right hand is cocked, your elbow's bent, right? Okay. And you've got the knife in your hand? Yes. Let's play it through, please. <laughs> and as he's pushing you, you jam your knife up into his heart, through his ribcage, right? After he touches my throat and pushes me back? Yes, correct. As your arm is moving up to stab him, you actually moved his arm closer up your, farther up your body with your own movement, right? I don't know how to answer that. I, I didn't see that. At the time that this incident happened, you agreed you weighed 248 pounds? Yes. Not one of these people that you've stabbed so far in the video were armed in any fashion, right? Right. You told an elaborate story about people pour, pulling knives on you, right? Mm. Overruled. Yeah, what's up with that? Right, you made up that story. To Brandy Hart? To Lieutenant Hart, yes. I don't remember that, but I saw the, the video, yes. At no point did anybody pull any knife on you, right? Correct. You're the only person who had a knife. Correct. You had said earlier that you had waved for your friends to come over because you were so scared, right? Right? During the, we're moving back in time now? Well, yeah, earlier you had waved. We yes. saw the video, you said yes. you had waved to your friends because yes. you were scared. Your fear level was at whatever. And in fact, Ariel came over, right? Yes. And he's in the group at the point that Riley Madison's standing there bleeding into the river, right? He's yes. standing right behind yep. him. Yep, yep. And at the time that you stabbed Tony Carlson, Ariel's right there, right in the group, correct? I see that in the video, yes. And when you stabbed Isaac Schumann, he's also standing there, right? I didn't see him there at the time, but yes, in the video, yes. Yeah. So this narrative about it being 13 on one, you had a friend there, Judge right? Your friend was standing I, right there. He's in the I, video, right? In the video. I don't remember him being there. Did you stop coming? Walking downstream. I don't remember. You waved for him, right? I waved at my group. At no point when you stabbed Tony, Riley, and Isaac, did you call out to your friend and say, hey, help me, they're attacking me, right? Even though he's in the frame and you can, he's close to the, the action, so to speak. You never said that, right? I was stunned, I had, couldn't talk. The last person you stabbed was Dante Carlson, right? Yes. 
And this is in the sequence of events, everything else had happened, right? Yes. Sustained. All the other stabbings had already occurred, right? At the point that you stabbed Dante Carlson. Yes. He wasn't punching you at that point. I was surrounded. People were coming at me. I was very, I just came, came up a couple of times being punched in the head, punched in the mouth. I fell on, on river rocks. I was in pain. I was hurting. Tony Carlson had broken up the fight between you and Dante, I, and Dante never hit you again after that, did he? Objection. That's form. Sustained form. Please rephrase. At the point that you stabbed Dante Carlson, he was not fighting with you, right? Correct. He had not punched you immediately before you decided to stab him. Correct. In fact, you took a couple steps toward him to stab him, didn't you? I thought he was attacking me. So at that point, you stabbed five people and you decided to leave the area. Is that true? I walked away. You walked up um, to Ernesto, right? Yes. You didn't say anything about being attacked, right? I didn't, I was in shock. You said they took my knife, right? To Ernesto? I don't remember said? that, but that's what I said according to all the video and well, if, if Ernesto said that, that's yes. what he said. Yeah. You still got the knife on your person, right? Even though you just told them they took your knife, you still had it. Right? No. When I, when I reached the tubes? No, no. When Ernesto came walking up and you walked up to him, you told him they took my knife. It's the first thing out of your mouth, right? That's, I don't remember that. Okay. Instead of walking to your group, you walked up to the south side, south shore of the lake, of the river, right? Yes. And on the way, you washed off the knife in the river? I don't Ooh. remember that. Well, you had blood on your river? hand and on the knife, right? Ooh. Yes. When you left the, the area, right? Yeah. When you got back to your group, nobody saw any blood on your hands, or, right? Foundation. Sustained. At some point, you mm. rinsed your hand and the knife in the water, mm. right? I don't remember that. Okay. But, yeah. well, what you do remember is throwing the knife up into the bushes on the south bank. Right mm. on the bank, yes. And then you finally walked over to your group, right? As I was walking, I threw it away, yes. No, mm -hmm. no. You walked out of your way to get to the South Bank to get rid of it and then walked back across Ooh. the river to your group, right? Overruled. That's what you did, right? Yes. Oh. We're going to take a play the video taken by Larry and Davis, Judge. It's it's grainy, but it's of some value. Do you have any more questions? Yes. Right. Well, maybe this will be a good time to, to take a break. Let's recess, and we'll come back at two fifty. Please take the jury out. All rise for the jury. was recording that part of it? No. And you've seen no. that, that video here in court? Yeah. Um, you are the person in the dark shorts, correct? In the, that video? It was not very clear, so I couldn't make out who was who. All right, but there's a person wearing dark shorts with the same body type as you in the video. Is it you? Fair. Hold on, hold on. Sustained. 
Well, let's, we're going to watch the video. We're going to watch it through at full speed. We're going to play part of it, but slower, but not the, not the end part. We're ready. What's the time for yeah. This is at the very beginning. Hmm. Mr. Mew, do you see yourself in the left-hand side foreground wearing the dark shorts? Where the, where the cursor's pointed? I can't make out. You don't know if that's you? No. Did anyone else on the river have the same body shape that you had at the time? Objection, no foundation. Sustained. You've been in court since the beginning of the trial, right? Correct. You've seen all these people testify? Yes. The people that were all involved in the incident, right? Yes. At the time that you stabbed these folks, there wasn't anybody else in that area of the river that had the same body shape as you, correct? Objection, no foundation. Sustained. It's the same question. Yeah. You're, you're aware that Dante Carlson's wearing uh, shorts that are black on the bottom and light gray on top, right? That's what I learned. Hmm. We're going to go through it slowly. Yes. Mm. Mm. All right. I think we'll maybe continue this tomorrow. I'm a little tired. He's pretty much done with his testimony, but then I, I guess they do a cross examination. And I think tomorrow is verdict watch. I mean, we could come back tomorrow, do verdict watch, and um, watch all the old the testimonies and stuff. Jill on Twitter said, self-defense, not guilty. Let me see what you guys said here. Crystal, thank you for the five, says, enjoy your meal mail. Hope all is well with you and the pumps and the girlfriend. I found God. Thank you for the 10. Says, defendant is right. Stop censoring me, YouTube. <laughs> and I found God emailed me and said that any anytime they type stab, it's censored in the chat, which is weird. Uh, yeah, YouTube has its own filters. I'm not, like, blocking people. That person said that, like, I found God said I'd stab them too if they came for me. 23 on one per. I don't think it was 20 something people. I think it was like 14 maybe. 20 something people on me. I'd stab them too. Fuck them. <laughs> okay. That's the email that I got. Um, And they said they couldn't type it in the chat. Let me see. I, I've had a couple, a couple people tell me that. Like they certain phrases and words. Let me see. They'll, they'll probably let it go by if I do it because I'm the streamer. But let me see. The person said I'd stab him too if it was me. Stab. Let me type it. Stab. Ooh. I just typed stab. It, why? It doesn't come through in the chat. That's interesting. Okay. I literally typed stab and it won't, it doesn't show up in the chat. Okay. So there's certain you, there's certain words. If you type it in the chat, it doesn't matter what YouTube blocks it. You can't, you can't say nothing. Wow.
Moses, can you see my stab? I do see your stab. Shiv, let me type, let me type Shiv. Shiv. Shiv shows up. If you type stab alone, see, just stab by itself. Nothing pops up. Wow. See, stab me. RMW. Yeah. If you type it by itself, it doesn't show. Oh, you might think it shows because you, you're watching yourself, but nobody else can see it. Wow. Anyway, but yeah, thank you for the super chat. Mustard Mama, thank you for the memberships. I guess we'll call it for tonight. If there's a chase, I'll be on the second channel. I don't have any more notifications. And tomorrow, let's check back in on this trial. Let's see what happens. On the River Stabber. Good night, y'all. Love you guys. Bye. Bloop, 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 bloop. Be back tomorrow. Peace. Bloop, 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 bloop.